sa kabila ng mabigat na hamon sa ilalim ng new normal, patuloy na nagpunyaki ang DepEd upang maghanap at maghatid ng mga alternatibong pamamaraan upang magpatuloy ang edukasyon sa pinakaligtas at pinakaangkop na paraan. Sa ilalim ng Learning Continuity Plan, layunin ng DepEd na magpatuloy ang edukasyon ng hindi na kompromiso ang kapakanan at kalusugan ng mga guro at mag-aaral. Isusulong ng DepEd ang tatlong pangunahing layunin. Ang COP na proteksyon, kaugnay ng mga health standards at safety protocols para sa ligtas na school year. Patuloy na edukasyon sa pamamagitan ng blended learning, distance learning at homeschooling na angkop sa kapasidad ng bawat mag-aaral at mabilisang aksyon sa pakikipagtulungan sa lokal na pamahalaan at mga partner organizations upang maihatid ang dekalidad ng edukasyon para sa lahat. Bawat DepEd Division ay bumuo rin ng sarili nilang learning continuity plan upang gamitan ang mga guro, mga magulang at mga mag-aaral sa bagong pamamaraan ng pag-aaral gamit ang online, modular, at TV and radio-based instructions. Gamit ang iba't ibang learning modalities, nagdaos ng dry run ang mga paaralan sa iba't ibang bahagi ng bansa. Katuwang ang mga local government units at mga education partners upang maging handa sa bagong sistema ng edukasyon. Isinagawa rin ang mga pagsasanay at orientasyon sa mga magulang upang maging epektibong katuwang sa pag-aaral ng kanilang mga anak. Sa anumang hamon o sitwasyon, handa ang depen. Handang kumilos, handang tumugon, at handang magservisyo. Ang dami ng mga pagsusubok at challenges ang naharap at napagtagumpayan ng ating Department of Education. Tuwing may pagsusubok, priority palagi natin ang ating learners at ang ating mga teachers sa tulong ng parents at saka partners at ang buong bansa. Ngayon, sa hinaharap natin itong new normal na sinasabi nila, matatag ang ating kagawaran, matatag ang DepEd, dahil pinagtibay na tayo ng panahon, kayang-kaya natin ito sa tulong ninyo. Pagdiriwang ng National Heroes Day. Uh, pagamat uh, holiday ngayon, tuloy-tuloy pa rin ang uh, pagkahanda ng kagawaran ng edukasyon para sa ating uh, nalalapit na pasukan sa October 5. Uh, sa ngalan ng uh, Public Affairs Service ng uh, Department of Education, ako po si June Arvin Godoy para sa isa na namang edisyon ng uh, Depth and Updates sa uh, Handang Isip Handa Bukas uh, Virtual Press Conference. Uh, good morning rin sa ating mga kasamahan sa media. Uh, sa ating mga stakeholders, mga magulang, uh, guro at mag-aaral, at sa mga patuloy na sumusubaybay sa atin uh, sa DepEd Philippines at of course uh, sa DepEd tayo. Uh, live din po tayo sa Tirad Pass Network, um, Planet Cable, uh, CLTV36, uh, Romblon Cable, at Kabangkalan Community Antenna Cable sa Negros Occidental. Uh, kasama natin ngayon ang ating ina ng kagawaran ng edukasyon, uh, Kalihim uh, Leonor Magtualis Briones, uh, Undersecretary and Chief of Staff, uh, Attorney Nepomuceno Malaluan, uh, Undersecretary Rev. C. Escobedo, Undersecretary Annalyn Sevilla. At dahil uh, updates mula sa ating mga field offices ang ating tema for this uh, virtual press conference, makakasama din natin ang ating mga regional directors, na walang pagod na naghahanda para sa school year 2020-2021. Unang na po si uh, Regional Director Malcolm Garma ng National Capital Region at si uh, Regional Director uh, Willie Cabral ng Calabarzon 
Kasama rin po natin si Regional Director Arturo Bayokot ng uh, Region 10 Northern Mindanao at si uh, Regional Director Estela Carino ng uh, Region 2 Cagayan Valley. At uh, kasama rin natin isang guro mula sa Alabat Island National High School, si Ma'am Aronen Ursulino. So, uh, umpisahan na po natin ang handang isip handa bukas press conference sa uh, pamamagitan ng uh, pambungad na salita mula kay Undersecretary at Chief of Staff, Atty. Nepomuceno Malaluhan. Sir? Uh, yes, uh, Magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. Magandang umaga sa uh, mga kasama natin sa Department of Education, uh, yung mga nanonood uh, ng mga guro at saka mga opisyales natin at the field level at ang mga kasama ko ngayong umaga. At uh, magandang umaga rin uh, sa ating mga regional directors na kasama uh, ngayong araw na ito. Uh, pero higit sa lahat ay magandang umaga sa ating mga kasama mula sa uh, media uh, na katuwang natin sa paghahatid ng uh, updates uh, tungkol sa pagbubukas ng klase ngayong October 5. At uh, ang ating mga kasama sa media ay hindi namang katuwang natin sa paghahatid ng uh, updates kung hindi naghahatid rin ng mga katanungan, clarification uh, mula sa uh, nakukuha nilang feedback from various sectors of the uh, society. Uh, ngay ang atin pong uh, uh, paghahanda ay nabigyan ng uh, malaki pang palugit nitong uh, pag-defer uh, bunga ng desisyon ni Pangulong uh, Duterte uh, upon the recommendation of the Secretary to defer the opening of uh, classes uh, to October 5 and this is on pure uh, distance learning uh, modality uh, at uh, yan po ay ngayon ay uh, napaka-advance na ng ating uh, preparations. Uh, uh, kung maalala nyo, ang ating basic education learning continuity plan ay uh, nagbibigay ng framework uh, at saka ng mga options uh, at, as well as the support mechanisms. But at the end of the day, ang operationalization po nito ay hindi one size fits all. Kung kaya uh, napakalaki ng naging tungkulin ng ating mga uh, region, uh, divisions, and schools sa pag-contextualize nitong learning continuity plan. Uh, sila din ang nag namahala dun sa mga dry runs natin or simulation for various uh, uh, context and situations uh, na, that is uh, responsive to the uh, conditions at the local and even up to the household levels uh, in particular uh, regions, divisions, and, and schools. So, ngayon pong araw, kagaya ng nabanggit ni uh, Director uh, Gudoy ng ating uh, Public Affairs Service, uh, ay inanyayahan natin ang apat na ating mga regional directors upang magbahagi ng mga uh, status ng paghahanda nila uh, represented dito ang uh, region uh, 2, NCR, Region 4A, at saka ang Region 10. Uh, so, ang pagbabahagi pong ito ay, ay parang pinapalawak lamang namin yung aming regular na pagbabahagi ng mga regional directors natin at our uh, almost weekly management committee uh, meetings. At uh, uh, simula pa po nung Abril ay wala tayong practically wala tayong holiday uh, kagaya ngayon uh, so uh, aside from that i at the policy level i uh, <coughs> ang, mal, ang ang policy uh, process that uh, is the most urgent now is the uh, preparation and the uh, legislation of the new uh, appropriations uh, act uh, for 2021 uh, kaya uh, mamaya pagkatapos nung pagbabahagi ng ating mga regional directors ay uh, magbibigay din ng uh, just an overview on the uh, 
uh, on the budget uh, proposal on the part of the Department of Education. So, uh, I, I think uh, this day is uh, actually devoted to uh, for us to share what is happening on the ground uh, with greater detail than what is shared with you at the national level. And uh, I think the questions uh, that is uh, more uh, reflective of uh, the details on the ground uh, can be given a due course uh, in today's uh, briefing. So, yun lamang on behalf of the Secretary uh, who I think uh, is in the opening of the IATF meeting but I, I think at some point she will be joining us also uh, in this briefing. So, magandang umaga po. Uh, uh, Merry Christmas to all. <laughs> Maligayang Pasko, sir, and uh, mag-start na yung bear months tomorrow. <laughs> okay, maraming maraming salamat, sir. Uh, to give us a brief background there po ng ating uh, preparations ng uh, field offices, let's also welcome uh, Undersecretary for Field Operations, uh, Yusek Rebsi Escobedo for his opening message. Sir? Uh, magandang umaga sa aking mga kasamahan sa Department of Education. Uh, kay Yusek uh, Nepo Malaluan, kay Yusek uh, Ann Sibilia, at uh, kay Director Jun Gudoy, sa ating mga regional directors na mag-uulat mamaya at sa mga kasamaan ko sa DepEd. At uh, magandang umaga rin sa ating mga guro, kawani, sa mga magulang, sa ating mga local government units na patuloy na sumusuporta sa mga programa at proyekto ng Department of Education. At higit sa lahat, sa mga kasama natin uh, sa media, uh, magandang umaga ulit. Uh, ngayon ay ginugunita natin ang araw ng mga pambansang bayani. At uh, ngayong araw, uh, 35 days na lamang ay October 5 na. Uh, ito ang araw ng pagbubukas ng school year 2020 to 2021 sa buong bansa. At uh, inaasahan po natin sa October 5, ay magbubukas ang 47,188 public schools na sinasakop ng 221 schools divisions at 17 regions. We are hoping for a smooth and successful school opening on October 5. Patuloy ang ating paghanda uh, mula sa regional offices hanggang sa antas ng ating mga paaralan. Mamaya, isasalaysay ng ating apat na regional directors ang detalye ng kanilang paghahanda para sa pagbubukas ng klase sa October 5. Gaya ng nabanggit ko noong nakaraang uh, linggo, August uh, 24, patuloy na isinasagawa ang mga dry runs uh, sa antas uh, divisions at uh, paaralan sa 17 regions. At patuloy din ang pagpiprint ng mga self-learning modules na kakailanganin ng mga mag-aaral sa darating na pasukan. And according to the reports submitted by the regional offices, uh, the self-learning modules which are ready for distribution already pegs at 57%. Uh, the schools division offices, operationalize the distribution of materials through collaboration with the barangays and local government unit officials. Door-to-door -door distribution, pick-up points in the barangay, and online distribution using different cloud platforms and external hard, drive, hard drives. Kagaya ng nabanggit sa aming report nung nakaraang uh, linggo, ang mga region at division ay may kani-kaniyang pamamaraan at plano sa pag-disinfect ng mga modules upang maiwasan ang in infection at COVID transmission sa hanay ng ating mga guro at uh, mag-aaral. Nakikipag-ugnayan po ang ating field officials sa mga local government units at barangay councils upang katuwangin sa pag-distribute and retrieval ng ating mga modules. Hinahanda na rin yung mga video lessons para, para sa Uh, TV broadcast and radio-based uh, instructions. And uh, another point sa pangunguna ng Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Service ng Department of Education ay patuloy po ang ating psychosocial, sahana, psychosocial activities 
sa hanay ng ating mga guro at kawani. And uh, it, ito po ay uh, ginagawa hanggang ngayon at bago magbukas ang uh, pasokan sa October 5. Itong general picture ay mas lalamanan sa pag-uulat ng ating mga regional directors, regional director ng Cagayan Valley, National Capital Region, Calabarzon, at Northern Mindanao. At may isa ring guru tayo na nandito para mag-ulat kung ano ang uh, sa antas ng paghahanda, ano ang uh, uh, itsura ng ating paaralan. Uh, ito lamang po at uh, maraming salamat po. Uh, maraming maraming salamat sir uh, that sa uh, USEC uh, Revsi Escobedo for uh, uh, field operations. Uh, Damako na po tayo mula, uh, sa mga ulat at updates mula sa ating mga regional directors. Uh, unahin po natin si Regional Director uh, Malcolm Garma ng National Capital Region. Sir? Yeah, thank you very much, Director June, and uh, good morning to all. Uh, good morning to all the members of the Executive Committee and uh, my fellow Regional Directors. And of course, uh, I would like to say uh, a pleasant morning to our media partners who are present this morning. So yes, we are uh, sharing with you uh, a brief uh, background on the preparation for the opening of classes of DEPET and CR. So here are the highlights of uh, these preparations. Okay, can we go on to the next slide? First, uh, in terms of enrollment, uh, all the schools division offices in NCR have already achieved more than 100% of their target enrollment for the school year 2021. Uh, the, the excess of the enrollment in most of the SDOs can be attributed uh, to the uh, uh, migration of uh, learners from private schools to the public schools. Uh, and this has placed uh, NCR uh, in the advanced level based on the submitted report, submitted fourth readiness report as uh, facilitated by the planning service. Next slide, please. So in terms of the actual preparation for the opening of classes, so let me share with you that majority of the SDOs in NCR, uh, 14 out of the 16 have already conducted their simulations as early as July. Uh, these simulations were done to, for us to be able to learn better on how to conduct the actual delivery of the modules and the actual conduct of the distance learning. So 14 out of the 16 have uh, conducted uh, a division-wide simulations involving most of the schools, while two divisions uh, have conducted a division level uh, by piloting some of the schools that, uh, will be in, that was involved in the simulation. In terms of the uh, production of self-learning modules, uh, eight SDOs are already within the 80 to 100 percent of the advanced level in terms of printing and production. Four SDOs are in the progressing stage, uh, and this means that they are already on the 50 to 70 percent printed modules, uh, and only one are in the cup catching up stage, but uh, we assure that the, the remaining percentage that has to be done uh, have already covered the first, first grading period of these modules. In terms of how to distribute the learner packages, all SDOs shall distribute on a one-is-to-one, -one. and as mentioned by uh, Yusek Revsi, that uh, this was the, the production of the modules uh, was basically in collaboration with the local government units of the National Capital Region. And uh, the local government uh, units of the NCR uh, have committed to provide self-learning modules or learner packages on a one is one basis. Now, we have scheduled the actual distribution of the learner packages starting September 1 and would last up to September 15. Because uh, in NCR, we would like to do the delivery of the learner, learner packages as early as possible so we can prepare better for the opening of classes on October 5. 
and the STOs were asked to plan the most of distribution considering two scenarios that might be uh, that might happen in the national capital region. So it may be either MCR will be under ECQ or MCQ or GCQ scenarios. In the uh, actual delivery of the learner packages that will happen within the within the weeks of September 1 to 15, uh, we might be asking some of our personnel to physically report to work, uh, either in the division offices or in the schools. But we have prepared uh, a guideline on how to how to conduct the actual physical reporting of our schools. That, has, that focus on uh, conducting a medical screening of all those who will be authorized to, to physically, work, uh, physically report to work. Next slide, please. Uh, for us to better monitor on the ongoing preparation, the National Capital Region has designed a regional readiness matrix that will guide the SDOs strategizing for their class organization and scheduling, establishing teacher workloads, finalizing learning and teaching platforms, and the distribution and usage of all available learner materials. So to give you a sample, uh, the following data were derived from this matrix. Uh, of the total number of enrollment, 47,557 classes have already been organized, uh, which gives us an average class size of 45.01 in the elementary, 45.14 uh, in the junior high school, and 41.30 in the senior high school. But these are, of course, subject to change uh, due to still increasing number of enrollment in our public schools. On the teacher training, 15 of the 16 SDOs are already in the advanced level uh, of uh, division level training. But right now, we have an ongoing uh, region-wide training online courses for teachers in partnership with an academic institution, Thames International, and the National Educators Academy in the Philippines. Next slide, please. So we also, uh, based on the matrix that we have prepared, uh, we also ask our SDOs to come up with their uh, pre preparation or activities related to the opening of uh, classes on October 5. So this includes the pre-opening of classes activities, the parents' involvement in home-based learning, and the proposed conduct of classes uh, when school opens in October 5. So, uh, hindi ko na babasahin yung laman, but basically, those will be the activities uh, that are in line for the opening of classes on October 5. So, I think this is the last slide, but uh, we just want to emphasize that uh, in the National Capital Region, we put premium on inclusive education, and probably in the uh, recent uh, showcases of simulations and dry runs, baka uh, hindi natin masyado pang naipakita kung ano ba ang uh, gagawin naman natin o what modality or what platform are we going the learning of our children or learners with special needs. So, uh, this morning, let me share with you a simulation dry run uh, that was conducted in SDO Caloacan City that would uh, feature the simulation in dry run involving children or learners with special needs. So, Director June, if we're ready with the video, so it's just a five-minute video. Thank you. Yes, sir. So, uh, we're going to watch for yung uh, simulation video ng... Uh, yeah. Hello. There you go. It's entitled Special Delivery.
lagi sa ngalan ng pangpublikong serbisyo, hatid ay pag-asa at tagumpay. Magandang umaga, Pilipinas! Magandang umaga, Kaloocan! Sa pagkakataong ito, ating matutunghayan ang paghahanda na isinasagawa ng FAO Kaloocan para sa paghahatid ng mga learning packets. Layunin ito na matugunan ang mga pangangailangan ng ating mga mag-aaral sa special education. Bawat isa ay makakatanggap upang magsilbing gabay sa kanilang pagkaaral at pagkatuto. Halit tunghayan natin ang proseso ng pagprint ng ating mga learning materials na gagamitin ng ating mga mag-aaral. Siniburo ng pamunuan ng SDO Kaloocan na dekalidad ng mga learning materials na gagamitin ng ating mga mag-aaral. Kabilang dito ang ating mga learners with special needs. Ito rin ay sumailalim sa komprehensibong validation process at quality assurance. Matapos ang printing ng modules, inihanda ng mga paaralan ang pagsasaayos ng mga learning packet na mayroong mga learning materials tulad ng worksheets, manipulatives, braille at mga school supplies. Upang masiguro na ang lahat ay makatatanggap ng mga learning packet, nakipag-ugnayan ang ating mga paaralan tulad ng bagong silang elementary school sa kanilang komunidad, barangay officials at mga police. Sa tulong na pinalakas na ugnayan ng ating mga community partners ay nakihatid sa bawat bahay ng ating learners with special needs ang kanilang mga learning packet. Sama-sama, tulong-tulong ang mga guro, magulang at komunidad bilang kaisa ng kagawaran ng edukasyon upang maihatid ang mga learning materials upang maipagpatuloy nila ang mga nilang pag-aaral sa pamamagitan ng isang Special Delivery Pag-asa sa Pandemia Bukod sa ating mga modules, ay naghahanda rin ng ating mga paaralan ng flexible online class schedules upang masusugan ang pagkatuto ng ating mga learners with special needs. Sa pamamagitan ng online class, ay magkakaroon ng online discussion at interaction. Pagtatanong at pagilingaw sa mga aralin. Good morning! Mukhang ang sasaya nyo. Kumusta naman ang online class nyo? Okay lang. Oh, ano talaga okay? Very good. Ang Division of Talookan, School Division Office, ay handang-handa na para sa uh, pasukan at uh, ito ay sa ilalim ng tinatawag natin the, the new normal of education. Marami pong challenges pero alam namin na dahil uh, tulong-tulong at kami man dito sa SBO ay nagbabayanihan para sa pagbubukas ng school year 2020-2021, alam namin na kami ay handang-handa para sa lahat ng mga mag-aaral ng, ng uh, lungsod ng Kaloocan. Salamat sa ating mayor kay Papa Malapita na nagbigay po ng tulong para po sa mga estudyante katulad po ng anak ko na kahit po ngayon nasa na po tayo ng pandemya. Dahil tao ang una, edukasyon ang una. Ang 
Okay. Thank you, Director June. Uh, and again, uh, would like to say thank you to all our stakeholders, especially our local government units, for really helping us uh, with the preparation for the opening of classes. Again, good morning to all. Thank you. Maraming maraming salamat. That's uh, Regional Director Malcolm Garma po ng National Capital uh, Region. Ang uh, susunod po na magbibigay uh, ng kanyang updates at report ay si uh, uh, R.D. Willie Cabral ng Calabarzon. Sir, go ahead. Good morning po. Good morning po. Uh, Nais ko pong bumati ng isang magandang umaga sa lahat ng ating mga bisita ngayong araw. At... Uh, uh, Nihahanda po natin ngayon ang ating uh, uh, pagbibigay ng report para sa ating uh, paghahanda sa taong panuruan 2020-2021. Uh, sa Region 4A po ay nais nating ibahagi kung ano yung mga naging kahandaan at uh, sa atin pong isinumite na uh, contextualized basic education learning continuity plan Uh, na naka-angkla sa kung ano yung uh, pinagbatayan galing sa central office. Sa pahina po, page 66 po ng ating uh, pivot for a LCP, binanggit po natin na magkakaroon talaga ng pagbabago sa usual business process to alternative uh, arrangement of service delivery. At tiningnan po natin ang ating mga opisina at mga eskwelahan bilang learning hubs at operation center at ang ating pag-aaral ay hindi magaganap sa ating nakasanayan na standard na uh, lugar at uh, binigyan natin ng pansin ang ating mga opisyal katulad po ngayong araw na nagbibigay tayo ng serbisyo 24/7 at transactional po ang lahat ng paghawak natin ng mga uh, bisita mga kliyente sa mga opisina upang higit na mapagtuunan ang ating uh, pag-observe ng health standards and protocol. Uh, tiningnan din natin na maaring lumaki ang ating mga pangangailangan sa mga gugulin, particular sa technical support, sa equipment at IT infrastructure, katulad na din ng uh, professional development and uh, reproduction of learning kits, whether print or digital copies. At uh, nakita natin na posible rin na mas maraming desisyon ang mag maganap sa mga level of governance na mas malapit sa mga bata. At uh, ayon sa uh, pagtataya natin sa ating kahandaan, uh, tiningnan po natin yung siyam na elemento na siyang magsasabi sa akin kung gaano kahanda ang mga paaralan at ang mga uh, opisina pag sa pagpapatuloy ng edukasyon. So, makita po natin dito yung regional contextualization, ang ating enrollment, ang ating curriculum. Uh, ang ating pong enrollment ay patuloy na tumataas at sa kasulukuyan, meron na itong bilang na mahigit na 3 milyon. At uh, meron tayong mga inihanda na mga curriculum guides sa iba't ibang learning modality at ating inihanda yung ating uh, learning resources sa bawat modality kung saan ang Region 4A ay nasa advanced level na ang, ng paghahanda maging ang mga paaralan. Ang atin pong assessment o pagtataya ng mga kasanayan at kaalaman ng ating mga estudyante ay sabay din po natin inihanda sa ating curriculum at patuloy ang pagsasanay ng ating mga guro. Minabuti natin na ang ating resource mobilization na nakatuon sa uh, human, finance, and partnership ay mabigyan din po ng uh, kaukulang pansin. At uh, nakakatuwa na lahat ng mga stakeholders ay patuloy na nagbibigay ng suporta sa ating paghahanda para sa taong ito. Ang health standards hindi po natin nakalimutan at uh, nagkaroon po tayo ng contingency plan sa ating uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic ting kagawaran ay may isa katuparan hanggang sa pinakamababang antas ng pamamahala. So kung titingnan po natin, ito po yung naging proseso ng aming ano, ng aming uh, paghahanda at ito po ay naging giya ng ating mga paaralan kung paano nila ihahanda ang kanilang contextualized learning continuity plan at uh, paano nila masisigurado 
na ang bawat isang bata ay magbibigyan ng sapat na edukasyon sa panahon ng pandemya. At uh, kung paano nila ihahanda ang kanilang contextualized learning continuity na nice plan. natin na uh, uh, ipakita dito ang kahandaan particular ng isang paaralan sa sekundarya sa lungsod ng Imos. Ito po yung Imos National High School. At uh, makikita po natin na sinunod nila ang ating proseso, yung ating flowcharts ng paghahanda. Ang paaralan pong ito ay meron ng bilang na ang, ng mga batang naka-enroll na 10,898. At sa bilang pong ito, mapapansin po natin na ang lahat ng mga uh, mag-aaral na nakatala sa grade 7 hanggang grade 10, kabilang na yung mga non-graded at ALS, ay lumangkas na po ng uh, isang daang porsyento kung ang pagbabatayan ay yung kanilang enrollment ng nagdaang taon. So we have 114 to at the high of 128% na bilang ng enrollment kumpara sa nagdaang taon. Paano nga ba binigyan ng uh, Uh, pagpapahalaga ang mga information na nakuha natin sa Learner Enrollment and Survey Form na ginamit sa pagpapatala. So ginamit po, base doon sa uh, LES uh, in inputs, uh, meron po tayong mga estudyante na pumili ng online, modular at blended learning at ito po ay nahahati sa mga bilang na ito. So balit paano na dinisisyonan ng paaralan ang pagpili ng tamang learning modality o yung tinatawag nating modality of best fit na makakatugon sa pangangailangan ng mga bata. Sinunod po natin ang proseso, hinanap kung ilan po yung mga gadgets, ilan ang merong internet connectivity, at sino ang may mga family and community uh, instructional support. At lumabas po dito na meron tayong mga uh, emerging learning modality na online at modular uh, distance learning. So, balit hindi po yan dyan natapos, dumaan pa po ito sa isang proseso upang desisyonan ano ba yung angkop na modality para sa lahat. At sa bandang huli, sinabi nila na kailangan tayong merong module, may printed and digital copy, and at the same time, online. Upang desisyonan ano ba yung angkop na hinanap din po natin ang kanilang uh, mga guro at uh, tiningnan ilan ba ang bilang ng mga kakailanganing guro base sa enrollment, ilang mga sections at dapat ma-organize at ano ang klase ng modality sa bawat sections na to. Gumamit po tayo ng mga formula at uh, binigyan ng classification ang role ng mga teachers na maaaring online, home-based uh, teacher, Pwede siyang online, uh, school-based, at meron din pong community learning facilitator. At yan po ay hinati uh, sa iba't ibang mga role classifications. Nagkaroon din po ng classroom uh, or class and teacher programming at makikita po natin dito uh, kung paanong uh, ang pasilidad at uh, mga kagamitan ng paaralan ay ginawang uh, Respo responsive dun sa pangangailangan ng bilang ng mga bata. At makikita po natin ang uh, kanilang schedule of classes na merong morning and afternoon session. Nagkaroon din po ng uh, mga stakeholders uh, engagement at uh, ginamit po dito ang pag-observe ng contingency plan for uh, COVID-19 pandemic. At uh, ang nakakatuwa po rito maging ang ating mga Uh, mga stakeholders uh, pinuno ng uh, pamahalang lunsod, ang mga riders, uh, ang iba pang mga stakeholders ay naging bahagi po at nagbigay ng kanilang tulong kung paano ito may sagawa. May sagawa. At pagkatapos po nito, ginawa nila yung implementation uh, dry run at makikita po natin dito na hybrid ang kanilang preparation sapagkat ang kanilang mga pamamaraan ay online and uh, modular distance learning kung saan ang atin pong eskwelahan ay uh, kinuwa na isang uh, virtual education studios. Makikita po natin dito uh, ang isang uh, 
uh, classroom na na convert into uh, sort of parang isang uh, BPO at nandito po nagre-report yung mga teacher at dito po nila kinakandak yung kanilang mga leksyon. Uh, iba't ibang klase po yan, uh, gumagamit po sila ng uh, screen at uh, uh, LED TV para mas maibahagi yung kanilang uh, mga uh, lessons. Sa bandang ito, makikita po natin ang isa ring parang studio na kung saan ang um, pagtatalakay at discussion ay po pwedeng mangyaring isang uh, talk show para magkaroon naman ng ibang uh, atmosphere ang pag-aaral ng mga bata. So generally, ang paaralan pong ito ay merong hybrid learning modality. Ngunit paano po ba nangyari ito? Dahil po ito sa pakikipagtulungan ng ating uh, uh, division office sa ating LGU at uh, nung biyernes lamang po ay atin pong binisita ang paaralan ito at nakita natin na kung paano nangyari ang paghahandang katulad nito. Ang isa sa programa dito ay yung Bida Iconnect Mo at ito po ay sa tulong ng Converge IT Solutions na kung saan ang atin pong mga paaralan ay nilagyan ng libreng uh, fiber optic uh, na connection at ginawa pong mga virtual education studios ang mga paaralan at ang atin pong mga Uh, mag-aaral ay pinalagyan din po ng libreng koneksyon uh, uh, ito po ay walang babayaran ang mga bata so klaro at uh, ang atin pong uh, paniniwala ay patuloy po ang paghahanda at uh, magiging matagumpay ang school year 2020-2021 sapagkat meron po tayong mga LGU and stakeholders na handang tumulong para sa ating uh, pagpapatuloy ng edukasyon isa sa pinakamagandang uh, uh, experience dito ay ang inisyatiba ng Eskwela Kooperatiba na kung saan ginamit po ang, uh, ang isang uh, kooperatiba ng mga mag-aaral na meron ng membership na 47,000 at may base capital na 20 million upang yung ilan sa mga bata na wala pang gadget ay mapaluwagan na mabigyan ng kanilang uh, gadget sa pag-aaral. Subalit, hindi po magiging problema din yan sapagkat hybrid sila, gumagamit sila ng online, modular, both printed and uh, online. At meron din po dito na ilang uh, radyo na merong uh, uh, USB slot, kaya po sinabi nating hybrid sapagkat kung ano po yung pangangailangan ay naibigay ng ating paaralan. So palagay ko po, ito lang yung uh, natitira ng slides. So maraming salamat po sa lahat at uh, uh, yan po ang paghahanda na ginawa ng Region 4A Calabarzon para sa October 5 opening of classes. Thank you very much Director June. Uh, maraming ito lang yung uh, natitira ng slides. So maraming salamat. Uh, maraming po. salamat sir. Uh, that's uh, Regional Director uh, Wilfred Cabral ng Calabarzon. Uh, maybe we also acknowledge the presence of our uh, Under Secretary for uh, Curriculum and Instruction, si Yusek Cristado uh, San Antonio, who's with us right now, na kamakailan namang ay pinarangalan ng Gawad Career Executive Service uh, Presidential Award. So, good morning, sir. Uh, kasama rin po natin ang isang teacher mula sa uh, Calabar Zone, uh, si uh, Ma'am Rowan Usulino ng Alpat Island National High School. Uh, Ma'am? So, good morning, Ma'am Rowan. Kasama rin po na natin. Kasama rin po na natin. Yes po, sir. Ayun. So, kumusta naman po ang uh, uh, paghahanda ninyo dyan sa Alabat Island po? Go ahead, Ma'am. So far, sir, dito po sa Alabat Island National Tama. High School. Kasalukuyan na po kaming nasa rurok ng aming ginagawang paghahanda para sa pagbubukas ng school year 2020-2021. So dito po gagamitin namin ang modular distance learning kung saan ang aming paaralan ay makakatulong para ipagpatuloy ng mga mag-aaral ang kanilang pag-aaral. Sa ngayon po, mayroon na po kaming 95% na printed modules or self-learning modules. Ito po ay sa tulong 
na ang aming division office kung saan sila po ang sumagot ng modules para sa senior high school at para naman po sa junior high school, nag-commit po ng 30% MOOE ang aming paralan, both for senior high school and junior high school. Dumagsarin po ang tulong mula sa aming mga minamahal na stakeholders. Sila po ay yung mga dati na naming kagapay mula pa noong mga nakalipas na taon. Sa nakita nilang paghahanta ng paralan, sila po ay naingan yung magbigay kung ano man ang kanilang may tutulong para sa ating mga mag-aaral. Sa mga susunod na quarters naman po, hindi na po kami nangangamba na walang modules na darating sapagkat kung ano man ang, kanilang... ang paralan, ang division office, sa tulong ng regional office and central office ay pagtutulong-tulungan upang mapalimbag ang mga modules sa darating na mga quarters. Nakakatuwa po na sa mga nakalipas na araw ay nakita namin ang suporta ng LGU at mga barangay kung saan sila po ay lumagda sa Memorandum of Agreement upang matulungan ang aming paralan sa pagdadala na po mismo ay magpapagamit ng kanilang triambulance upang mahakot ang mga modules dadalhin sa kanilang mga lokasyon. Ang mga magulang po ng aming mga mag-aaral ay naandun din ang suporta. Ang iba ay nais sila ang kumuha ng kanilang modules para sa kanilang mga anak upang masiguro na makakarating sa kanilang mga anak ang mga modules na ito. Sa mga kaguruan naman po, lalot higit dito sa aming paralan, ang aming paghahanda ng mga lesson exemplars mula sa ibinigay na modules at pagsasagawa pa ng ibang mga worksheets upang maiangkop sa iba't ibang klase ng aming mga mag-aaral. Sa ngayon po, di namin nababatid pa kung anong uri pa ng mga mag-aaral ang mapapapunta sa aming sections. Subalit, ngayon pa lamang inihahanda na namin ang iba't ibang set ng mga aralin upang mabigyan lahat sila ng angkop na karunungan para ngayong school year 2020-2021. May mga magulang din po kami na nangako sa amin ng mga guro na sila ay tutulong para ang kanilang mga anak ay magabayan. So lahat po kami ay sama-sama at tulong-tulong sa pamamagitan ng pagbibigay namin ng mga cellphone numbers ng mga kaguruan upang magkaroon ng madaling komunikasyon mula sa mga magulang at mga mag-aaral upang ang ating school year 2020-2021 ay maging makabuluhan. Nangako rin po ang aming LGU na bibigyan ng ham radio para mas mapabilis pa ang komunikasyon. Sa lahat po ng paghahanda na aming ginagawa, hindi po namin nakakalimutan ang health protocols sa aming mga kaguruan upang kami ay maligtas sa aming mga magulang, sa aming mga mag-aral. Lagi po namin ipinapalaala ang pagsunod sa health protocols. At ganun din po kaagapay namin ang MIATF at ang aming RHU at ang ilan pang ahensya ng pam pamahalang lokal ng aming bayan. So hindi po maiwasan ng mga challenges dito sa aming bayan. Living in an island is already a challenge. Kami po ay nasa isang isla at ito po ay isang malaki ng challenge para sa amin. Ang aming lokasyon, bagamat kami ay nabibilang sa FIP municipality, ay hindi po kami nahuhuli sa mga paghanda na kailangan para sa susunod na taong pampaaralan. So ang ilan po sa aming mga Agam-agam para sa school year 2020-2021 ay ang percentage of learning. Ano kaya ang percentage of learning ng aming mga mag-aaral? We are not sure na sila nga ba ang sumagot sa mga activity sheets na aming ipinadala. So yun po ay aming gagawa ng paraan upang malaman natin, malaman namin kung 
ano pa yung pangangailangan nila at nang sila po ay masuportahan pa. Sa iba't ibang klase ng mga bata sa ngayon, so kailangan namin na paghandaan talaga ng iba't ibang activities upang hindi po sila maumay. Ganun din po ang ilan sa ating mga magulangin ay nagsasabi na hindi nila kayang turuan ng kanilang mga anak. Nakahanda naman po ang paralan at ang barangay at ang komunidad para sa mga para teachers na tutulong po sa kanilang mga anak sa ganitong sitwasyon. So ang communication between teachers, parents, and students due to distance and location, yun po ang isang nagiging sagabal para sa amin. Subalit, hindi po mawawala ng saysay ang lahat sapagkat kung wala man signal at di namin maabot ng cellphone ang mga kabataan, kami po mismo ang pupunta para mag-home visit sa kanila. At least may araw kami na itatalaga sa loob ng isang linggo na mabisita man lamang ang kaganapan ng aming mga learners. So sa lahat po ng aming paghahanda na ginagawa, masasabi ko po na ang aming paaralan, ang Alabat Island National High School, ay handang-handa na para sa school year 2020-2021. Bagamat walang mga mag-aaral na pupunta sa aming paaralan, hindi po namin pinababayaan ang aming mga silid-aralan. Ito yung naayos pa rin namin na parang katulad pa rin ng dati upang sa kanilang pagbabalik, ay maramdaman nila na sila ay para dito sa paaralang ito. So nakakatuwa po na ang mga magulangin, bagamat hindi pa nagsisimula ang pasukan, ay sila po ay eager at nagtatanong kung ano ang mga kailangan nilang ihanda, kung ano ang kailangan ihanda ng kanilang mga anak. So ramdam ko po bilang isang guro na ang kagustuhan ng mga mag-aaral na makapasok na at may pagpatuloy na ang kanilang pag-aaral ay hanggang doon na lamang. Sa ngayon po, ay may mga group chat na kaming binuo para sa aming mga sections at doon ay nasasalamin ko sa kanila na miss na miss na nila ang pagpunta sa paaralan. So sila po ay palaging nagtatanong sa mga guro at bilang amin namang suporta sa kanila, sabi namin, kung nais nice nilang manghiram ng libro, ng mga dating libro po, ay willing po ang paralan na ibigay sa kanilang mga magulang ang kanilang mga aklat upang hindi masayang po ang kanilang naka, ang oras na dumaraan. So mula po sa Labat Island National High School, masasabi ko pong handa na kami para sa school year 2020-2021. Salamat po. Ayun, maraming maraming salamat Ma'am Rowan Ursulino mula sa Alabat uh, Island School. Sa Quezon po yan, sa Calabarzon kay uh, uh, Regional Director uh, Willie Cabral. Maraming maraming salamat Ma'am at saludo po kami sa inyong lahat sa ating mga teacher frontliners. Uh, ang susunod po na magbibigay ng kanyang report ay uh, of course ang ating uh, Regional Director ng uh, Region 10, si uh, R.D. Arturo uh, Bayoko. Sir? Uh, sir, nakamute po ata kayo. My contact, Director John, and all the USEC and ASECs, I've seen Director uh, USEC and Sevilla, and the rest of the team, my contact, Dev Ed, uh, and on behalf of Northern Mindanao Region 10, which comprises the provinces of Bukidnon, Kamigen, Lanao del Norte, Misamis Occidental, Misamis Oriental, and the cities of Valencia, Malay Balay, Ingoog, Iligan, Osamis, Oroqueta, Tanggub, El Salvador, and Cagandor City. I would like to present to you very briefly the highlights of our operations, dry runs or simulations, and the continuous preparations for the opening of classes for school year 2020-2021. Napapaloob po ang lahat ng mga ito sa aming learning continuity plans at sa pagsusulong ng handang isip, handa bukas. Next slide, please. Very briefly, we will share the things that we have done and all those that we continue to do in relation to our simulation of classes delivered in distance learning. We also would like to share to you bits and pieces of the in information and orientation that we do 
and that we did for our parents, the community on their roles to their children's education, our engagement with media partners to help in our information, education, and communication advocacy, the development and review of our self-learning modules, the school's division's reproduction of the modules and our monitoring. We also would like to share to you the production of our learning episodes for both TV and radio, radio instruction, the SLM's conversion to digital formats for our offline learning. We also share to you how our classes are being organized, the continuous information dissemination, capability building for teachers and school leaders, and as well the monitoring and supervision that we do, and in the filling up of new items and natural vacancies amidst this health crisis that hit the country and the world. Last uh, July, last week of July and the first week of August, all the 14 schools divisions in the region conducted their dry runs or simulation of classes that featured distance learning delivery modality to the four to 10 identified schools in each of the city and provincial divisions. They featured and showcased their planning, parents orientation, briefing of teachers, the packaging of SLMs, distribution and retrieval of these modules, the home visits that they conducted, feedback and reports, consolidation and analysis, and of course the monitoring and supervision that's done in the different layers from the regional division up to the district levels. The different layers of parents' orientation on the roles of the new learning landscapes were also done. These are done in different approaches, such as virtual orientations. We also capitalize on the radio and TV programs that we have initially partnered, or even small group orientation face-to-face, -face, but in strict adherence to the required public health standards. In Region 10, we would like to share to you some of the photos in this presentation that captured our parents' orientation in the different layers. We also would like to underscore the Bayanihan culture among Filipinos, which is very evident in Region 10. But we continue to do it even better to serve our clients by closing the gaps between the actual against the desired level of readiness, even if at the moment we say we already are ready. What's, what's beautiful about the, the collaboration part, uh, partnership that we did in the region, no less than the Regional Development Council, spearheaded the convention of the media partners virtual, uh, with the presence of line agencies like NPC, the ICT, for the possible uh, radio and TV-based instruction that will be partnered for free among the media partners we have. And in that forum, we're very happy that we're able to partner 14 TV stations, local, and 39 radio stations for our radio-based instruction. All these are for free. Uh, another activity that we did to perfect our readiness is on the development, the review, and the quality assurance of the locally developed self-learning modules that the region have been doing to augment uh, the efforts of the National Dead End. And from there, we did monitoring on the reproduction of these modules that are done in the different divisions of the region. We also continue to work on the conversion of self-learning modules into, lear into radio and TV learning episodes, realizing that we already have 14 TV partners and 39 radio station partners for our radio and TV-based instruction. And we also did conversion of modules into digital and interactive formats, uh, specifically to be used by our offline learning delivery modality. And then we have organized the classes, which actually featured the different learning delivery modalities. So classes have been organized according to online, offline, modular approach, radio and TV, or even the blended distance learning, which is a combination of three or more distance learning delivery modalities. And then there's the continuous uh, information education and communications advocacy, of which the regional office has a regular program called Bigat Independent, which is a platform to really communicate our readiness, our preparations, and updates 
on the Department of Education Region 10. And this is being backed up by the different local radio and TV programs at the city and provincial division levels. Uh, the, the partnership with Talakayan, with the Philippine Information Agency, is a very is a very big effort of the region that continues to deliver our updates in terms of uh, the opening of, of school uh, opening of school readiness. We continue to capacitate our teachers and school leaders with so many webinars that have already been conducted and participated by teachers and school leaders sponsored by the divisions. that our participants were able to join. These are just some of the list of those webinars that I am referring to. And the division and the read the divisions in the region continue to monitor and supervise the preparation of classes in all aspects. And then at the school readiness level, we're looking at how classes are being organized for dry run and for the actual opening on, on October 5. We take a look at the class size and even the sectioning, which has the prominent feature of sectioning the children according to residences, because we realize that our students who will be studying from home really need support system. And only when they can find their classmates within the locality or within the neighborhood, that will even give them better confidence to learn uh, this, uh, through distance learning. The assignment of teachers have also been factored in, like if they have been teachers for a long time in grade five or this particular subject, we also try to consider that, considering that mastery in terms of teaching delivery is already ensured as assured. But we also uh, feature some strategies in terms of class sectioning or, or our assignment of teachers where grade one teachers before are now assigned to grade two to, to monitor and exactly follow through the former grade one students who were under them and now will still be under them for grade two. So that's just part of, of the initiatives that are done at the school level. The preparation of learning packages, the class program, which is very essential because our students would apparently still be guided with the class program studying from home, that there's really time to wake up, time to eat breakfast, time to take a bath, time to attend classes, even if these are just done at the, at the respective homes. Then external stakeholders orientation, health and safety measures against COVID-19. And we also try to take a look at the sources of funds that were used during the dry run implementation. Right at the implementation, we try to take a look at the learning delivery modality effective, effectiveness and the learning plan for the week that are being attached to the modules as delivered, the distribution and retrieval system, class right. monitoring, and we take a look at school readiness and implementation. The continuous health education and the management of emerging infectious diseases are still part of the deliverables of the Department of Education schools, no? time after time. And we did not stop our, our filling up of items, realizing that there are natural vacancies and even for those new items. We continue to recruit, select, and hire uh, to, to augment our manpower that are already in place. No? And then we make the communication lines open vertically or horizontally as we continue to engage central, region, division, and district offices, and even the schools to make sure that updates are being delivered. And we say that in uh, at the moment, Region 10 would like to underscore Bayanihan culture among Filipinos, which is very evident, that brought to a good level of readiness of Northern Mindanao. But we continue to do it even better to serve our clients by making sure that we are able to close the gap, especially on resources between the actual and against the desired level of readiness. And at the moment, to put all what I have shared in a context, may I invite you to watch a very short video of the Zami City Central School dry run or simulation of classes featuring distance learning. Via, can you please share our video now? Thank you very much. Ang Ozami City Central School matawag na ikaduhang panimalay sa mga kabataan. Diin sila malipayong nga nagkataon para
para makabot ang ilang mga tinguha o pangandoy. Ang sadihang Nakapasok na po sa bansa ang 2019 Novel Coronavirus o NCOV. Ang pagdula, kalipay, bahakhak, o pangandoy, sama sa adlaw, takulahaw, misalo. Kung sa lang ang mga kabataan. Uh, the children cannot wait Education cannot wait. Sa pag-abot sa pandemya, nagkadaiyang problema kalambigit sa edukasyon ang nisulpot sa unahuna sa kadausa. Ganahan ng takubana ay online discussion gawa sa module na gamiton. Unta na ay mo anhedari, nga mo palo up sa akong anak, nga na ay mo guide, nga teacher. Okay na ako ang module, kaya wala manggit ni internet. Hatagan lang po doon tayo yung videos sa mga leksyon. Ang Ozami City Central School, andam mutubag sa Panginahang Lanod. Atong paningkamutan o tambayayungan na masolusyonan ang inyong problema pinaagi sa lahi-lahi ng learning modalities. Ang Division of Ozami City naningkamot ng edukasyon mapadayon. Giandam ang tulunghaan pinaagi sa pagpanghinlo o pagdisinfect sa tanang dapit ni Ini. Pagbutang sa COVID-19 safety signages o pagpatuman sa precautionary measures. Paghimo o pagpangandam sa mga modules o pagimprinta ni Ini. Ani kita karon nag-cover sa kasamtangang gipahigayon nga orientation sa mga ginikanan sa Grade 5 sa Osame City Central School, mahitungod sa delivery sa nagkalahilahi nga learning modalities. To really check into our preparations because we want our learners to continue learning. Dili ta gusto nga ma-vacuum or magkagap. Naagyod ang LGU, always supporting. Julio 27, 2020. Gipahigayon ang simulation o dry run sa blended distance learning sa Uzami City Central School. Gisugdan kini sa hamubo nga programa na gitambungan sa Schools Division Superintendent Jean G. Biloso, Assistant Schools Division Superintendent ODS Bores, o Anakleta Gakasan, Chief sa Curriculum Implementation Division, inubanan sa mga supervisors o school heads gikan sa lahi-lahi na eskwelahan. Sa simulation, gisiguro nga mapatuman ang mga precautionary measures sama sa designated entrance of exit gates. Paghugas, pagtunob sa foot bath, pagkuha sa temperatura o pangalkohol. Gisunod ang social distancing samtang gapaabot sa ilang schedule. Gisugdan ang pagdistribute sa mga modules kada grupo sa gitagda nga oras. Tagsa-tagsang nidawat ang kadaginikanan o double check ang naisulod na materyales sa maong extended plastic envelope. Makita ang kalipay sa mga kabataan sa pagdawat sa ilang learning package. Gisugdan didayon ang klase base sa class program na gipreparar sa District of Division Supervisors. Sa Group A, gihimo ang modular with online classes. Good morning class! Today, we will start with English subject. Do you have your modules with you? Sa Group B, mao ang modular inubanan sa digital supplementary videos na anaa sa flash drive. Ang Group C, mao ang paggamit sa module o pagpaminaw sa leksyon sa radyo. Ang ato matabang sa barangay kung ang mga estudyante, kung dili sila makakuha sa ilang mga module di sa atong barangay, at sa atong di sa eskwila sa atong Basami City Central School, uh, andam kami o gato ang hatagan o mga uh, sakop sa itong barangay aron mo ay mo-assist sa ito ang mga estudyante 
nga nagsakop diri sa atong barangay Tinago. Ang grade 5 teachers kanunay na nag-follow up sa ilang mga estudyante sa adlaw-adlaw na buluhaton pinaagi sa pagtawag og home visitation. Kung aduna usab mga pangutana o kalibo, ang mga ginikanan mutawag lamang sa mga magtutudlo. Gawas sa OCCS school heads, aduna usab ang district o mga division supervisors nga miduaw sa eskwelahan para mamonitor ang ipahigayon na klase. Isip pag-evaluate sa issues and concerns sa klase ni Anang Adlawa na ay regular meeting na ipahigayon ang principal. Ang usa sa mga school head, kontento o malipayon sa naitabo na simulation. So, akong masulti nga hapsay, nindot o uh, matuman yun na to ang Uh, pag-implementar sa itong modular, blended modular distance learning. Isip ginikanan, unsa man imong ikasulti sa programa sa DepEd na mapadayo ng edukasyon sa mga kabataan. Mapasalamatong kay ko sa Department of Education sa Division of Osami City o ilabina sa Osami City Central School di India ng tungha akong mga anak na mapadayon ang ilahang pagskwela taliwala aning pandemic. Salamat, give kaayo. Base sa orientation sa mga ginikanan, may tungod sa simulation o dry run. Naisgutan na ang module iuli sa adlang biyernes sa gitnakdang oras sa ilang grupo. Ang Group A, naglangkob sa mga ginikanan nga naay internet o kompleto gadget. Mag-uli sa modules sa alas 3 hangtod sa alas 3 e medya sa hapon. Ingon man sa Group B, nga grupo sa mga ginikanan nga dunay gadget apan walay igong koneksyon. Nga iuli ang modules sa alas 3 e medya hangtod sa alas 4 sa hapon apil na ni ini ang flash drive. Usab ay katulong grupo sa alas 4 hangtod sa alas 4 e medya sa hapon ang pag-uli sa module, lakip na niini ang radyo. Maokin ni ang mga ginikanan nga walay koneksyon o internet sa balay. Kini si Jupe Rupinta, reporting. Madasigo na akong giauhag ang tanang mga ginikanan, labi na sa ginikanan sa Osami City Central School nga ang atong mga kabataan ato yung suportahan sa pagpadayon sa edukasyon uban sa mga magtutudlo o mga ginikanan nga mapadayon gayod ang edukasyon sa atong mga bata. Para sa bata! Para sa bayan! Dagan salamat, Director June. Ayun. Um, that's uh, maraming salamat, RD. That's uh, Regional Director Arturo Bayokot po. Uh, Doon sa updates tungkol sa paghahanda ng Region 10, uh, Northern Mindanao. Para sa opening of classes. And of course, uh, joining us right now is the mother of the uh, Department of Education, uh, Secretary Leonor Magdalis Briones. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, may we also ask for your message and update po to the thousands of viewers who are monitoring our live stream today. Ma'am? Good morning. Uh, magandang umaga sa lahat. Uh, may muntag ka ninyong tanan. Maya gadiya nga aga sa tanan nga mga bisdak sa Visayas, kag sa Mindanao, and the rest also of the country. Um, we are very happy and we are very pleased to uh, give you updates on the progress of our preparations for the opening of uh, the school year uh, for 2020. Uh, talagang handang-handa na. Uh, we thought that we would bring uh, and share with you uh, what our regional directors and what is happening also in the various uh, parts of the country. Na mayroon tayong uh, dry run para sa online platform, may dry run sa mayroong uh, uh, mga gadgets pero uh, mahina ang connection, mayroong para sa radyo, mayroong para sa television, at saka yung pag-deliver ng modules. Uh, 
uh, at sa tanang nakikita natin na ito ay ginagawa sa uh, major uh, languages sa uh, region sa ating uh, bansa. Kami naman at the policy uh, level, marami ding pangyayari. Siguro aware kayo na uh, nagbigay ng dalawang major na direktiba ang presidente during the past week uh, kung saan talagang na-mention niya specifically ang Department of Health. Una, itong sinasabi niya na kailangang uh, gagawa ng mga hakbang ang Department of Education para ma-enhance ang mental health, ang social, so, uh, psychosocial uh, uh, preparedness ng ating mga kabataan at mga teachers uh, dahil nga sa uh, epekto nitong uh, ating napaka-dangerous at napaka-devastating na pandemic. Ang pangalawa niyang uh, direktiba ay kaakibat sa kanyang budget message uh, last Tuesday na sumite na ng Presidente ang 2021 budget proposal sa Kongreso at uh, meron na namang uh, specific instruction doon sa Department of Education. Uh, ito yung sinasabi niya na kailangan uh, bigyan ng diin ang sinasabi niyang health literacy para ang ating uh, lipunan, ang learners natin, ang lahat ng mamamayan ay handa sa mga nahaharap sa danger sa health at saka uh, kailangan ma-maintain ang wellness sa ating learners at saka sa ating teachers at lahat na mamamayan. So dalawa itong major directives. Uh, last week, uh, maalaala ninyo na uh, si Director uh, Ronnie Ko uh, ng ating uh, Department of Education nagbigay ng briefing kung anong mga um, uh, hakbang ang ginawa ng departamento para ma-enhance ma ang uh, psychosocial uh, health ng ating mga bata at staff at siguro uh, tayo na sa uh, lahat sa ating uh, lipunan um, Naging kaugalian na kasi ng Department of Education tuwing may sakuna, mayroong threat, mayroong danger, ay nagbibigay tayo ng psychosocial uh, orientation at adjustments para sa ating mga bata at mga teachers. Ginawa natin yan sa Taal, ginawa natin yan sa Marawi, uh, sa Taal Volcano. So, hindi naman bago yung practice natin na talagang tinutulungan natin ang ating learners at teachers para ma-deal nila, para ma-hawakan uh, nila itong mga threats sa kanilang uh, well-being at saka sa kanilang uh, peace of mind. Uh, may nagsasabi na nababahala sila dahil uh, tumataas daw ang rate ng uh, suicide sa mga uh, bata at saka sa mga adults. Kaya uh, nagbigay ng uh, instruction ang, ang presidente. Uh, sa totoo lamang, on record sa amin, na uh, dalawang kaso ng bata na sinasabi nila na nawala ng buhay, at saka ito ay tinitingnan natin kung ano ang uh, dahilan kung saan ito nanggagaling. Pero kung isipin din natin, ang ating enrollment ngayon, ating mga learners, umabot na ng 23.9 uh, million, halos uh, 24 million na ang learners natin na nag-register. Every day, mayroon tayong dagdag dahil may mga late enrollees. Now, ito ay napaka-impressive na ano, uh, accomplishment dahil this is already 86%. Uh, compared to last year's uh, enrollment. Lahat na ito, kalahat-lahatan. Pero sa public sector, uh, umabot na tayo ng 97.33% uh, ng ating uh, mga learners uh, last year. Uh, sa alternative learning systems, uh, halos kalahati na ng dati nating nag-enroll uh, sa ALS or alternative learning systems ay bumabalik na. Uh, makakatulong sigurado ang pagbukas ng ekonomiya, ang pagbalik ng mga trabaho para yung mga workers, uh, kasi hindi lang naman bata ang nag, uh, 
i-enroll sa ALS, pati adults nag enroll naman sa ALS. Na ngayong may mga trabaho na ang mga uh, workers natin, lalo na OFWs, ay tataas din yung ating enrollment dito. Ganon din sa private sector, uh, halos 43% ng dating uh, mga learners ay naka-enroll na at uh, medyo tumigil na yung sinasabi nating migration uh, ng mga private uh, students, learners sa ating public schools na umabot ng 398,000. So paganda ng paganda yung ating mga numero uh, dahil nga siguro sa pagbukas uh, ng ating uh, ekonomiya at siguro dahil uh, nakikita ng publiko, ng mga magulang. If you think... Uh, 23.9 million learners nag-enroll. That's about 46 million ka parents o mga guardians na naniniwala sa sistema ng edukasyon nila ng mga bata at saka uh, tinitingnan nila ang kahalagaan ng edukasyon. So, um, tungkol sa mental health na sinasabi ng presidente, uh, Nandiyan na yung mga programa natin. Actually, inumpisa namin mga dalawang buwan na ito. Uh, series ito ng uh, mga uh, <coughs> psychosocial uh, interventions. Hindi lamang yung mga bata ang hinahanda natin, kundi ang mga teachers, ang ating mga staff at ating mga executives. So may uh, halos araw-araw may schedule tayo na webinar para sa uh, iba't ibang uh, grupo ng mga citizens na uh, naghaharap ng mga siguro masasabi nating uh, uh, psychosocial uh, uh, issues dahil nga sa threat ng uh, pandemic na ito. Kasi talaga naman nakakatakot, ang hirap-hirap magplano, magpredict kung anong mangyayari. Ang hirap-hirap isipin kung mawalan ka ba ng trabaho o nawalan ka na ng trabaho, kailan babalik ang trabaho. Uh, mahirap ding uh, isipin kung ano kaya ang mahawa ba ako, uh, saan kaya ako pupunta. Ang dami-daming mga unknowns uh, ngayon. And so, uh, ito ay challenge sa atin na uh, uh, pagharap nitong mga uh, pagbabago na ito. Kaya uh, built-in talaga sa atin itong ating mga psychosocial uh, interventions para hindi naman lalala, para magkaroon naman ng confidence ang ating kabataan, ang learners at ang ating teachers na makayanan natin kung tayo ay uh, magkaisa. Yung sinasabi natin na we heal as one. Uh, nag tayo ng mga eksperto uh, sa mga bagay na ito. So, na tumutulong sa atin pag ng ating mga uh, programs at saka ng counseling. Ngayon, uh, ang pangalawang uh, mandato ng President, uh, sinabi niya at saka specifically na mention niya talaga ang Department of Education sa kanyang budget message na sinasabi niya na kailangan i-enhance ang health literacy sa ating kabataan, sa ating teachers at saka sa mga citizens uh, dahil nga uh, uh, napaka dangerous din ang mga health threats na uh, hinaharap din natin ngayon. Uh, bago um, pag-umpisa ang Duterte administration, sinabi na ni Presidente yan na kailangan i-enhance natin ang ating health curriculum. Ang, ang health kasi ng ating kabataan at saka teachers sa ating lahat ay konektado sa nutrition, konektado sa mga psychosocial uh, factors, konektado sa environment. So ito ay integrated mismo sa curriculum. So even uh, wala pa si COVID, wala pa si pandemic dahil marami naman tayong nahaharap na iba't ibang klasing mga uh, sakit na nakaka-threaten, nandiyan ang flu, nandiyan ang SARS, uh, for, nandiyan ang AIDS, nandiyan yung mga ordinaryong sakit. Eh, kaya talagang built-in sa curriculum din yan. Uh, binago natin, lalo na strengthen ang curriculum natin ngayon sa health. Kaya ma mahalagang bahagi ang health literacy.
Ang ibig kong sabihin, itong dalawang mandato ng presidente, ginagawa na ng Department of Education. Una, yung sa mental health, psychosocial interventions. Wala pa si COVID, ginagawa na yan dahil inutos na niya yan bago pa siya nag-umpisa sa kanyang term. At saka yung health literacy, uh, may bago tayong curriculum at naka-embed yan sa iba't ibang mga subjects ng ating mga bata from K to 12. Pati ang teachers, atin din silang rinirimind na uh, wag silang magpabaya sa sarili nila. Kasi konektado ang health sa nutrition, yung sinasabi ko nga, psychosocial uh, well-being, uh, sa peace of mind, sa environment, issues of gender and reproductive health. Also, uh, climate change, yan lahat ay konektado, kaya ang ating curriculum ay buo. So, we'd like to assure uh, everyone uh, that we are uh, implementing, we have been implementing the mandates, the latest mandates of the president. Paghuli naman na balitang i-share ko sa uh, ating mga uh, nakikinig at nagmamanman uh, sa uh, edukasyon ay this week mag-umpisa na ang defense. Uh, I will call it defense. Mag-umpisa na ang sharing ng uh, balita tungkol sa ating 2020. 2021 budget. So, um, nag-submit na ang president ng kanyang uh, budget message at uh, uh, magkaroon ng uh, pre-budget discussions with both the minority and majority and Department of Education. Alam naman ng lahat na ang Department of Education at ang education sector yun ang pinakamalaking bahagi ng budget dahil nga Uh, ito ay mahalaga at uh, talagang nasa konstitusyon na ang pinakamalaking gasto sa gobyerno ay dapat para sa edukasyon. Kaya uh, I hope uh, i-monitor din ng publiko ang mga discussions ng budget namin. Uh, hindi lamang ang budget namin, ang budget in relation to the size of the department, the number of our teachers, our, our learners, Uh, what we are doing uh, in response to the pandemic, as well as our budget in relation to the overall national budget, which is also under considerations. So, uh, itong linggong ito at ang mga darating na mga araw ay very exciting. Para kaming nagbibilang, naghihintay ng Christmas, uh, how many days more before uh, October 5? Kaya, uh, talagang handang-handa na ang lahat at lahat na posibilidad na challenges ay hinarap na at binigyan ng solusyon uh, kaagad. And in the meantime also, sinishare namin ang mga budgetary uh, um, requirements para matupad itong lahat na ating mga programa na napaka-challenging dahil uh, karamihan ng ating ginagawa ay hindi pa natin nagagawa in the, the form uh, that we are doing them at, at present, pero with your support. And I hope and I, uh, I'm also uh, expecting na uh, the good news about education will be shared with everyone. The good news of what uh, all of us are doing, hindi lamang sa department, ay share sa lahat in the realm of psychosocial interventions, in the realm of health, in the realm of um, making available uh, the infrastructure, uh, the tools, and the uh, equipment that is necessary for our uh, uh, new and strengthened uh, curriculum. So um, every week, We will be uh, updating you every week. We will be sharing with you the good news about education. Kumbaga, sa old uh, language, the English, the gospel of education. Gospel means good news. There is good news in education. There is good news for the country. Thank you. Thank you, June. Salamat sa inyong attention.
Maraming maraming salamat ma'am sa updates tungkol sa mga direktiba ng Pangulong Duterte para sa kagawaran ng edukasyon. Mamaya po ma'am ay magbibigay din ng detalyadong update si uh, Yusek Ann tungkol sa pag-uumpisa ng budget hearing. Uh, ma'am, ang huling regional director po na magbibigay ng update ay si uh, R.D. Estela Carino ng Tagayan Valley Region. Uh, R.D. Estela? Yes, uh, good morning, Director June. Good morning, Secretary and all the other EXECO members joining us. So I am reporting the uh, preparations we had done. Uh, and this is uh, the preparation done by our dedicated and committed uh, uh, teaching and non-teaching personnel for our 806,239 learners. So part of our preparation for Region 2 would be, uh, of course, aside from the preliminaries, we had uh, strengthened the uh, our partnership with the local government uh, officials so in the school board we have presented our uh, learning continuity plan for the region i presented it uh, in the social development council for the uh, superintendents of course to the provincial school board and then they went we went to the district to the uh, municipal school board and since as mentioned by our secretary we have contextualized the uh, learning plans for a uh, learning continuity plan for the school so even in the barangays the school heads also shared their learning continuity plan and aside from that we have also partnered with uh, the ost through their star books uh, with the Department of Agriculture through their program, the radio program, and some other radio, uh, radio programs. Uh, the, the, uh, the importance of the partnership we have done, especially with our local government, of course, would not only be uh, for the financial support that uh, they have given us, but also, of course, also for the manpower, especially in the distribution of our modules and uh, guiding us in the different protocols um, in relation to COVID-19. And uh, because of this, uh, for region two, for the entire region, nine divisions, uh, for now we only have nine active uh, cases uh, coming from the learners, non-teaching and uh, teaching personnel. So aside from this, uh, yes, next slide. We also have the disposition of the, if we go to the slides, of the disposition of the uh, disposition of the modules. Yes. So uh, for the, uh, for the uh, printing of our modules, most of the school's division had it in-house because of the number of risograph uh, bought or donated by uh, our local government, uh, aside from the use of the uh, SEF fund, uh, some LGUs also use their uh, general fund. And so um, as, uh, we only have one division that had um, division-wide printing through public bidding. All the rest, the in-house printing went as uh, far as the schools. And uh, we have to accept that for some schools, the modules may not be enough for one is to one. So our directive is definitely for kinder to grade three, the self-learning modules will have to be one is to one. But for grade four to 12, then that is where we can make use of textbooks, the learning activity sheets, and some other learning, uh, mod uh, learning materials for those who cannot really give it one is to one. Next slide, please. And uh, as to the conduct of the pilot testing, we started it in July 20 up to August 18, you know, especially when the opening was uh, moved to October 25, October 5, so we continued. So the, the pilot testing was uh, done in, in all of these uh, modalities. So we have printed, printed and uh, digitized. We also have the uh, radio-based instruction. We also have the online, and we have all the different types of blended learning. So all the different divisions had their own um, pilot testing, dry run, 
in the different schools. Next slide, please. Now, from, from the dry run, you know, we have seen uh, some of these challenges that we have to address. Of course, there are uh, several of these challenges. Some are uh, just minor, but some are we consider major. One of the major challenges uh, experienced by the teacher, of course, would be the, the distance of the houses of these learners and the kind of road that they have to pass through. Some have to cross rivers and so on and so forth. So um, aside from that also, we found out as part of the uh, dry run that really some of our learners do not have parents who could help them. And uh, a small percentage, we found out that uh, there were some parents who really answered the modules for their, for their kids. No? So what are our solutions for this? So first, of course, would be as to the distribution of the modules, we, uh, we give a policy or we decided no, with the SDS that for the coastal areas, the distribution will really be done quarterly because of the difficulty. And for in the mainland, because of course also of the COVID protocols, we decided to have a monthly you know, distribution and then retrieval so that the, the teachers you know, will not be exposed constantly to, to of course, the danger of, of the COVID. As to those parents without, uh, those learners without parents to guide them, then the, the schools assign uh, para teachers for this number of learners who are identified without anyone to guide them. And then also we assign teachers in the barangay who lives in the barangay or puro to take care of these learners so that they will be guided. As to the parents also, we uh, have to really give extensive orientation like they have to be patient, like they should not be answering really the, the, the self-learning modules if they want their children to, to, to learn. You know? And then uh, anyway, the, the, the time no, is uh, quite long for, the, for their children to really answer it by themselves. And then some teachers will really be guiding them. Uh, also, we found out that for some areas, some teachers are are afraid to, to go, especially in, in areas where, of course, we know that there might be problem on their safety. And so we have coordinated with PNP and AFP whenever the modules will be distributed, then we, we need their help. And aside from that, of course, the, um, the help of the barangay officials in the distribution. We also uh, opened our line through our public affairs unit, any problem, uh, experienced by the learners or the uh, or the parents, as well as uh, the community, you know, in relation to the implementation of the basic education learning continuity plan, will will be sent through our office so that we can give technical assistance. And um, as to the protocols, the last slide, please. Yeah, the the uh, the schools are prepared even if. Uh, there is no face-to-face -face because some parents are going no, there to get the books that their, their children would be needed. Some of our teachers are reporting to prepare the, the materials. And so we have to um, do the different uh, protocols. So schools have hand washing. All the schools have food-operated uh, alcohol dispenser. And then there should be thermal scanning also. And then, of course, they have to follow physical distancing. Um, training as to our uh, overall readiness, as to the enrollment, we can, uh, Region two, 2 is already in the advanced level. For the printing of uh, self-learning module, we are also in the advanced level, except for two divisions in the progressing level. For teacher training, we are in the advanced radio and TV modality, that's the advance. Actually, when the classes or when the opening of class was moved to October 5, no, then we, we had to do 
some adjustment in the RBI because we found out that the frequency wasn't able to reach some parts of the of the municipality or of the division we're in in those municipalities then they will have to be given uh, USBs and aside from that also we we have to maximize the use the 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 materials were in some divisions can share with the uh, RBI uh, lessons of the other divisions. For the online, we are still in the progressing um, stage because of the really the unstable internet. And that is why we only have some few schools like here in Tugegara, we only have one school that will be on uh, under online because of the problem of unstable internet. As for the orientation of parents, we are advanced already because of the help of the uh, of our local uh, government as well as uh, other national government uh, units or agencies. And for the health and safety protocols, we have uh, we are also in the advanced stage. And I'd like to mention you know, that um, as of now, we only have nine active cases five learners, two teach, uh, teacher, teaching personnel, and two non-teaching personnel. And uh, we, we hope to always follow the protocols to really uh, situate that our learners, teachers, and non-teaching are uh, safe from COVID-19. Uh, we would like to share uh, some videos of uh, the simulations that happened during our dry run. Thank you, Director June. May we have the video? Our is ay isang halimbawa ng solid na material. Tulaklak, bola, at libro ay halimbawa ng solid. Ang mga ito ay may saktong hubis at dami kahit saan lalagyan man sila ilagay. Sa mga larawang ito, ito at ito ba? Alam mo ba kung anong iron nito? Pansinin naman natin ngayon kung may pagbabago sa bugis ng liquid na ito kung isasalid natin sa iba't ibang lagayan na may iba't ibang bugis. Ano namang anyo ng matter ito? Nakita ko na naman natin ngayon kung nagbababo din ang bugis ng gas kapag inilagay sa iba't ibang lagayan na may iba't ibang bugis. They say research is boring, hard to do. Do you think of it that way too? Throw away those kinds of perceptions. How we perceive things make all the difference. It's just a matter of mindset. Always think that research is fun. Yes, you heard it right. Research is fun. It can take you to adventures and experiences that will help you grow as a student and as a person. Hello, dear learners. This is Teacher Lovely of ITEL TV, transmitting English language learning to your respective televisions. Prepare yourselves and join me in this learning session. Now, turn your modules to page 3. Are you there now? Let us discuss lesson 1, Nature and Process of Communication. Let's start. Sa bagong normal, gamit ang mga hotlines na kapaskil sa learning kids, Maging on-call po ang aming tanggapan sa pagsagot ng mga katanungan ng mga bata ukol sa module na kanilang inaaral. Ang lahat naman ng mga buruan sa working area ay maaaring direktang sumagot sa mga sinagunin tanong. 
Matapos silang i-notify ng buro sa Learning Assistance Desk. Ang lahat ng mga signatura ay magkakaroon ng hotline. Ang mga numero mo ito ay bukas mula na 7 ng umaga hanggang alas 5 ng hapon. Bibigyan din ng prioridad na kamustahin ang mga estudyante ang nagpalista sa Learners Without Parents upang siguraduhin may gabay sila sa pag-aaral. Pero ang tanong, ano nga ba ang mangyayari sa mga naprosesong learning materials sa bawat house? Ang mga naayos ng learning modules at learning activity sheets ay ipapadala sa Learn Main Centers ng paaralan. Isa sa ayos dito ang lahat ng learning materials kada grade level upang maging handa para sa packaging. Susunod ay ipapackage na ito mula sa main center at iiimbak pa ng talian sa tip-off area ng paralan. Dito susumbiin ng mga transport vehicle mula sa mga barangay ang mga modules kada lunes. Kapag dumating na ang transport vehicle, susundan ito ng mga teacher coordinators sa bawat barangay upang masiguro ang distribusyon nito sa mga estudyante. Kung magkakaroon man ng kakulangan sa modules, itatawag ito agad sa main center upang makapagpadala ng karagdagang kopya. Ang lahat ng ito ay gagawin ng may karampatang pag-iingat upang masigurong ligtas ang ating mga guru. Serena Lubitagapan. Ako ang nagsilbing ESD online teacher ng mga batang sumailalim sa dry run ng online distance learning. Ang online distance learning ay isang pamamaraan ng pagtuturo para sa mga batang may kakayahang gumamit ng internet. Dinamit ito para sa proseso ng pagtuturo at pagkatuto habang hindi ka pinahintulutan ang face-to-face -face na pagtuturo. Sa ganitong pamamaraan, ang mga aralin at iba pang gawain ay in-upload online. Thank you po. Uh, so, yan po yung mga iba't ibang uh, nangyari noon sa dry run. Thank you, Director June. All right. Uh, just to agree, Ma'am uh, Estela Carino, ang uh, uh, Regional Director ng Cagayan uh, Valley Region. Uh, kasama rin po natin ngayon si Undersecretary uh, Annalyn Sevilla upang bigyan tayo ng update at overview uh, tungkol sa panukalang budget ng uh, Department of Education. Ma'am, good morning po. Magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. Magandang umaga, Secretary, sa ating mga kapamilya sa DepEd. At sa ating mga uh, kasama sa media, and of course, uh, pinaka-importante ang ating mga kasama ngayon na mga nag-monitor sa ating Facebook Live. So, I'm trying to share my presentation. Can you see it, uh, Director June? Is it showing? Yes, you said that. Uh, yes, okay. Uh, just trying to find out how it can be in the yeah, slide screen. Okay. Ready? Nakikita na, Director June? Yes, ma'am. Apa? Yes. yes. Okay. Good morning. So, this is a technical briefing. So, medyo gagawin kong mas uh, madali maintindihan. Uh, mas lalo na importante to sa ating mga eskulahan. Ano ang meron tayo sa 2021 na budget natin? Uh, Unang-una, ang kabuang budget ng buong bansa ay tataas ng 9.9%. Ngayong taon, mayroon tayong 4.1 trillion at next year, ito ay magiging 4.5 trillion. So, 9.9% ang taas ng uh, buong, uh, kabuuan ng ating budget para sa buong bansa. Susunod naman ay ang um, budget na meron pong pinakamataas sa buong uh, national government. At ito ang education sector o ang ating uh, sektor ng edukasyon. May total na 754 billion Hindi lamang po ito DepEd, kasama natin ang CHED, lahat ng state universities and colleges, at TESDA. Kung ito po ay kukumpara ninyo sa taon na ito, 2020, meron po tayong 693 billion ngayon. 
at ito ay tumaas ng 61 billion or 8.8% increase para sa susunod na taon. So tingnan natin ang edukasyon. Ang sektor ng edukasyon, kumpara ngayong taon at sa susunod na taon, ay may mga increase lahat. Uh, Siyempre, pinakamalaki dyan ang DepEd kasi kinder to grade 12 tayo. Ang state universities and colleges at ang CHED ay para sa tertiary education at yung TESDA naman ay para sa mga skills development. So, ang porsyento rin o ang hati natin sa edukasyon ay makikita ninyo tumaas at 80.39% kumpara sa ibang mga ahensya na nagbibigay din ng serbisyo para sa edukasyon. So, tayo ngayon ay pupunta sa DepEd lamang, no? Meron tayong 606.4 billion. At ito po, pag inyo pong uh, ni-round off at pagsinama natin yung ating contribution para sa GSIS, ito po yung RLIP or Retirement and Life Insurance Premium. Yan po yung ating, uh, yung share ng, ng ating employer o ng gobyerno para sa GSIS ay magiging 605.74 billion. Meron po tayong itinaas na 53 billion or 9.54% na increase kumpara sa budget natin ngayong taon na ito. Hahatiin po natin ang ating total budget na 605.7 billion. 475 billion dito ay para sa ating mga uh, salaries, benefits, allowances, lahat pertaining to employee welfare ay nandito po sa personal services. At makikita natin na ito ay tumaas ng 13.54%. Kasi by next year, meron na naman po ulit na salary increase. Ito po yung second tranche ng salary standardization law. At uh, makikita po natin yung detalye nito sa ilalabas ng Department of Budget and Management kung magkano yung magiging increase. At yan po ay naisa batas na. So, meron po tayong kasigurahan sa ating mga guro na ating po mga uh, naka-employ ngayon. At meron din po akong detalye mamaya kung ilan pa ang sasama sa akin, madadagdag ng mga guro at mga manggagawa. Ang MOE, o ito po yung ating operasyon, pambayad sa ating supplies, uh, utilities, etc., ay tumaas ng 3.49%. From 94.9 billion, ngayon ay 98.2 o 98.3 billion. Mamaya, ibibigay ko yung detalye. Pero ang makikita natin dito, ang capital outlay, ito ang ating mga... Bagong classroom, pag-repair, at yung mga equipment, more than 15,000 pesos, ay tinatawag na capital outlay, ay bumaba ng 18% or 39.6 billion ngayong taon na ito, ay magiging 32.3 billion. So, kabuuan, 9.54 increase, 605.74 billion. Nais ko rin na i-explain sa ating uh, mga nakikinig ngayon, na itong 605.7 billion ay ito po yung dumaan sa proseso. Tayo po ay uh, uh, nag-submit ng proposal but it is higher than 605.7 billion pero ito po yung nabigyan ng suporta ng Department of Budget and Management. At tayo po ay susunod po natin gagawin ay syempre pumunta sa Congress kasi tayo po ay uh, magkakaroon ng budget hearing at explain din po natin yan isa-isa sa kanila kung ano yung proposal natin at yung recommendation. Papakita ko sa inyo pero hindi ko na kayang isa-isahin ito probably in the other briefing and uh, of course mamaya after the press con ay uh, magkakaroon po kami ng meeting with all the regional directors para po malaman natin kung ano ang implication o epekto ng mga budget na ito sa ating mga paaralan. Makikita ninyo na ang mga nakalagay dito ay nagkaroon ng increase sa allocation or almost the same at ito yung pinaka-importante at alam natin na ang susunod na taon ay continuation pa rin ng ating basic education learning continuity plan. Kaya makikita nyo na ang malaking budget natin na itinaas ay sa DepEd Computerization Program, sa ating flexible learning option kasi nandito ang ating self-learning modules, at yung increase sa personal position kasi magkakaroon tayo ng dagdag ng mga guro kahit sa isang taon. Ito naman yung mga programs na nagkaroon ng decrease or kabawasan sa ating budget. At uh, makikita natin na ang school dental health ay wala na next year. Ang last mile school ay bumaba from 6.5 to 1.5 billion. Ang voucher program ay may binaba rin na 10 billion. At yung iba pa po dito na mga uh, benefits. Pero ito po ay uh, explain ko mamaya kasi ang ating secretary Liling Briones ay nakipagpulong sa Department of Budget and Management at ating pong na ipaliwanag na mas kailangan natin sa last mile school, kailangan natin sa 
subsidies and assistance o voucher program at kailangan pa natin para sa mga learning resources or self-learning materials ang additional na pondo at tayo po ay napagbigyan ng DBM diyan for unfortunately hindi po siya kasama sa program kaya nakalagay diyan programs ibig sabihin wala pa siya sa NEP as program pero nasama po siya as standby or unprogram fund mamaya po tapakita ko yon Ito din po ang iba pang pa mga programa natin na meron pong epekto ng pagbawas sa ating budget. So, ito pong magiging materials na ito ay bibigay natin mamaya para po uh, makita ninyo yung mga detalye. Ito ay highlights lamang ng ating mga programa na importante ngayon at uh, maging sa susunod na taon. Makikita ninyo sa mga number of personnel or teaching positions natin as of May this year ay meron na tayong 830,000 na mga filled up positions. Kasama, ito po ay para sa mga teachers lamang or guru lamang. At kami po ay uh, meron ngayong taon na ito na 10,000 na position na create na po ang 9,640 na fill up na po ang 244 kaya ongoing ang ating filling up of teaching position as of this year. And next year, may bago ulit na 10,000 new teaching position. Sa ating school-based feeding program, itong taon na ito, ay meron tayo tinatarget na mga uh, mag-aaral na atin po mabibigyan ng uh, pakain sa programa na ito, 1,775,349. Ito po ay na-revise na namin ang target dahil kailangan natin mag-update. Ngayon, na hindi pumapasok ang mga bata, hindi natin nakuha ang kanila mga timbang, Pero gumawa po ng inventaryo ang ating mga paaralan at na, na atin na po itong na-revise na at ito po ang ating gagamitin din para sa susunod na taon na target. Para po sa ating voucher program, meron po tayong 1,118,766 na mga uh, mag-aaral na nakakatanggap ng ating voucher para sa ESC. At meron din tayong 1,290,000 thousand na mga mag-aaral para naman sa mga senior high school voucher. Makikita nyo rin po sa slide na yan ang iba pang mga uh, mag-aaral na talagang uh, nakikinabang o uh, nabibigyan po ng subsidiya ng ating gobyerno. Sila po ay nag-aaral sa private school at tayo ay nagbibigay ng suporta para po mapagpatuloy nila ang pag-aaral nila sa private school. Sa susunod na taon ay mayroon po kasiguruhan na sila ay magiging voucher students pa rin at yan po yung ating target na nakalagay dyan. In terms of the learning tools and equipment, ito po yung para sa ating technical, vocational livelihood at sa mga, sa kamanga science and math equipment. Nagbago lang po tayo ng indicator dati po by package, ibig sabihin isang kurso, isang package. Ngayon, ginawa natin by pieces para mas madali po natin to na uh, ma, ma, ma procure at ma distribute ay by number of pieces at yan po yung uh, indicators para po sa isang taon, sa susunod na taon. Ito naman po yung ating basic education facilities, mostly capital outlay. At dito ay uh, atin po siya breakdown sa new construction, repair, number of seats or school seats na atin pong bibilin, at yung pong electrification or mabibigyan ng mga uh, linya ng kuryente para sa taon na ito at sa susunod na, ta na taon. And dito rin po yung estado ng ating uh, pangkasalukuyan na taon. At uh, makikita na atin rin po itong ginagawa kahit meron po tayong pandemya ngayon, ay tuloy-tuloy na ginagawa natin ito. Uh, ito po isa rin mag maganda pagkakataon na habang wala ang mga bata inaayos ang construction dahil alam natin na uh, later on, kaya tinawag natin siyang blended learning, ay uh, magkakaroon tayo ng continuation ng ating education and of course with the uh, guidance and uh, policies ng Department of Health. At uh, habang yun po ay uh, iniintay natin, kailangan kami po ay nagpe-prepare for that. Makikita natin na lumiit ang budget for the new construction pero mas marami po ang ating inilagay para sa repair. Dito, ito ay dahil sinama na natin ang washing facilities, ang mga toilet construction, at lahat po para po sa minimum basic health standard na ating pong uh, ginagawa pang kasalukuyan at sa susunod na taon. Ang ating DepEd computerization program ay uh, isa sa mga nagkaroon ng pinakamalaking increase, about 4 billion increase. Uh, dito po kasama ang 37,221 computer packages for next year. At uh, pati po yung public education network na inanunsyo po ng ating mahal na presidente ng SONA ay gumagawa po tayo ng paraan na magkaroon ng internet connection. 
umpisa sa ating mga eskwelahan, sa mga guro, at uh, later on, para rin sa ating mga mag-aaral. So, ito po ay ginagawa in coordination with uh, PCOO, uh, DITC, at uh, iba pong mga ahensya pa ng ating gobyerno na maggagawa uh, ng paraan na tayo ay magkaroon ng in ang connection sa internet. At ang pinakahuli dito, pero pinakaimportante, ang ating textbook and other instructional materials. So, textbooks production will still be ongoing. At naka, nasa iba pong budget item, yung ating self-learning modules. Ito po ay uh, meron pong nakalagay na 15 billion for next year. At kaya po tayo ay gumagawa na ng mga pulisiya at pag-prepare para po magawa natin to ng mas maaga at uh, maging mas maayos po yung ating uh, distribution for the next year. Ito po ang uh, kinatawag namin minor program pero importante rin. Ha? Minor because uh, hindi siya yung kasama doon sa pag-measure uh, sa atin in terms of education agency. Pero kung makikita nyo ang general management, ang ibig sabihin po niyan MOE, ay nag-increase ng 4.3 billion rounded off. 4.3 billion is for our minimum health standards. Kaya ang ating mga pangangailangan ng mga guro mag-aaral on the PPE and all the uh, health condition na dapat po ay protection na natin ay uh, gagawin po natin for next year. Pag ito po ay naapprobahan, na uh, ibibigay po natin to hanggang sa level ng eskwelahan para po makapag-prepare tayo for the next school year. Ang iba po po ng mga programa ay akin na lang pong dadaanan dahil mas marami po yan. Kapag ka pula, ibig sabihin ay bumaba ang budget. Pag green ay tumaas ang budget. Ito po yung sinasabi ko kanina na unprogrammed appropriation. Through the appeal and uh, request of our Secretary Liling Briones to the Department of Budget and Management, nadagdagan po tayo ng 25.8 billion. Una, para sa electrification ng ating mga eskwalahan, 3.8 billion. Ang last mile school ay madadagdagan ng 6.5 billion. Ang ating materyales ay madadagdagan ng 5 billion. At yung ating voucher program, ay madadagdagan ng 10.5 billion. All in all, 25.8 billion. Pero ang tawag namin dito ay standby fund, unprogrammed fund. Bakit? Kasi ang sikasiguruhan lang na magkakaroon ng pondo ay yung nakapasok sa DepEd budget. At kung magkakaroon ng excess na revenue next year, or magkakaroon ng bagong revenue collection next year, or approved loan, ay saka po mailalabas ang mga budget na yan. Uh, at least ito po ay ibig sabihin, tayo yung nakasunod sa pila. Kung sakali magkakaroon ng mga bagong mga revenues na papasok next year, yung kanina pinakita kong slide will be given priority at yung po ang magkakaroon po ng additional na budget pa sa atin. So 605 plus the 25.8 billion will be the budget of uh, Department of Education next year. We look forward for the budget hearing. Uh, magkakaroon na po kayo, kami ngayong linggo na ito sa susunod na linggo. At uh, nakaredy po ang ating sekretary at uh, sampu ng kanyang mga kasama sa kagawaran ng edukasyon para po atin po ma-explain at ma-depensa na mas kailangan natin ang, ang pondo na ito para po mapagpatuloy natin ang ginagawa natin ngayon na basic education, learning continuity plan. Marami pong salamat, Director June. All right. Um, thank you so much, ma'am. Maraming salamat, uh, Under Secretary Adeline Sevilla, para po sa updates tungkol sa proposed budget ng uh, Department of Education. Uh, at this juncture, uh, tayo po ay pupunta na sa katanungan ng ating mga kasamahan sa media. Ang uh, unang magtatanong po ay si uh, Bam Orpilia ng Bombo Radio. Bam? Bam Orpilia ng uh, Bombo Radio. Bam? Good afternoon. Alright, parang may uh, uh, connectivity problem. So, uh, pabalikan natin si Bam ng Bombo Radio. Unahin muna natin si Jasmine Romero ng ABS-CBN. Jasmine, go ahead. Good morning po sa inyong lahat. Um, Secretary, gusto ko sana po, you know, um, overall, ano na po ang kalalabasan ng classroom ratio at uh, pa paano na po ito makakaya na ng mga teachers knowing that um, more teachers will be expected to work uh, teachers will be expected to work more and micromanage a lot more compared to the, the traditional setup 
Ma'am, yeah, si Yusik just batay po ang teacher student ratio. Uh, eh, baka susukutin ni Ma'am. Anyway, Ma'am, if you will allow me. Yes, of course. Thank you, Ma'am. Good morning. Ay, good afternoon na pala. Good afternoon, Jasmine. Thank you. Uh, so far, yung student pupil ratio natin, nandun, bababa pa rin doon sa 1 is 35. Pero may mga, may mga schools like in uh, NCR na medyo tumataas na dahil nga sa transferees from private to public. Uh, but this, in spite of that, uh, we still see that uh, the uh, student pupil ratio is just the same uh, or better than the previous uh, several years. No, no, 1 is to 50, 1 is to 60 tayo. It's stronger than the current ratio. If you compare it in school year 2019-2020, for elementary, it went the, uh, uh, it's now down to 29, 29 uh, 1 is to 29. In junior high, it's 26. Uh, senior high, it's uh, 32. Pero dahil na meron mga late enrollees pa, hindi pa natin makikita yung talagang tit teacher pupil ratio that is at until after the uh, late enrollees are already in the, the system at mas stabilize na enrollment. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Jasmine. Back to you. Itatawag ito agad sa... Sir, ng mga batang sumailalim sa dry run ng online distance learning. Uh, Ang distance learning ay isang pamam... Okay, all right. Uh, Jasmine? Um, question additional ka? questions po, no? Go ahead. Uh, ba babalikan ko po si Secretary. Um, Secretary, nabangit niyo po kanina that DepEd is going to strengthen the mental health curriculum and the stance. Um, ang tanong ko po, paano po ito magagawa ng DepEd kung kulang pa po ng guidance counselors? Maglalagay po ba ng mental health professionals sa mismong DepEd? And will you be hiring um, guidance counselors at this time? Uh, for the past uh, several months, we have been holding uh, webinars and upskilling uh, of uh, teachers. And we have engaged the services of professionals kasi uh, itong uh, situation na ito is uh, um, more challenging um, uh, situation natin at present is more challenging than uh, the usual everyday uh, rigors of, of holding classes and so on and so forth. So we have, we have been having these uh, sessions for several months now. At sa kadate kasi ang uh, focus ng ating attention of course as far as I'm concerned, it's the learners. Yun ang una. Uh, lalo na kung mayroon tayong sa mayroong sakuna, mayroong earthquake, at saka ngayon, nandito si COVID, ay ang mga bata. Kasi kailangan i-build up yung kanilang capacity to, to deal and to accept uh, change. No? So, uh, this time, we are uh, putting also additional emphasis on uh, the upskilling of teachers themselves. Now, uh, tinanong nga ako paano na yun, uh, mukhang hindi masyadong uh, uh, magiging effective ito dahil kulang tayo ng guidance counselors. That's true, but we are seeking also the help of, uh, of uh, professionals. Um, at not only ang teachers ang uh, binigyan natin ng ganitong klaseng upskilling, but also our, our, our policy makers, our program coordinators, uh, mayroon tayo for the executives, uh, the entire range na of, ano, kasi usually kung may, may, may lindol sa isang lugar, sa kanila lang yung uh, upskilling, sa kanila lang yung uh, uh, pag, uh, uh, include, pag-enhance ng ano, nila, ng skills nila. Pero ngayon ay eh, pangkalahatan. Kaya napakalaking uh, program ito at ang nagmamanage nito uh, last week nga, uh, brinif tayo lahat ni um, Director uh, Ronico. At saka hanggang ngayon, these are still ongoing. Pero all levels na, Jasmine, uh, from learners to, to teachers to the executives themselves. 
especially ang, ang tama sa edukasyon na paka tinde no because of the changes in the the schedules and you're you're dealing with uh, uh, with humans ranging from children to uh, people who are nearing retirement and it's not only the pandemic it's the requirement of res- the requirements to survive the pandemic so that means uh, a different way of teaching different combinations of, of learning modalities different skills that are needed so uh, mas ano talaga mas matindi ang, ang, ang pressures at this time on all of us including myself tapos at the back of our mind pa we keep on wondering uh, will i catch it uh, this this covid thing uh, can i survive it tapos nandiyan pa yung mga curriculum nandiyan pa yung mga assignments nandiyan pa yung learning continuity program so ha, ano nandiyan lahat na so uh, uh, kailangan talaga natin na uh, uh, ang, ang nangyayari dito hindi naman individual lamang na sinasabi nating counseling it's really by groups na magsi-sharing ng experience magsi-sharing on how uh, we we survive uh, these challenges kasi uh, the pressures are very very intense uh, as as you can uh, imagine it's not only dealing with the physical dangers of pandemic it's dealing with the psychological requirements the strength of will the, the courage tapos ano pa you are surrounded by criticisms you are surrounded by discouraging news um, whatever you try to do is is hardly noticed at all and and to keep on that's a huge challenge for for education and not just for uh, and not going beyond the learners kasi dati talaga ang focus namin ang learners. Hanggang ngayon, focus namin learners pa rin. But uh, uh, kasama na ang kami na lahat-lahat. Uh, like, saka iba't ibang klaseng pressures. Uh, the pressures, for example, on, on the learners are, are, are different dahil they have to be adjusting to the idea of a uh, different type of schooling uh, and to be staying at home. Uh, the pressures on the teachers are also very, very different. Aside from the constant fear, which is always articulated endlessly of catching coronavirus, uh, there is also the the the, the uh, pressure to uh, upskill, the pressure to learn new ways of teaching. Uh, hindi lang yung lecture uh, method. Uh, how do you teach through TV? How do you teach through radio? and how do you use all this modular learning materials at saka nagwa-widen yung uh, uh, groups of people whom you have to deal with you deal with local governments you deal with the parents and of course you deal with the deped officials then you go to the administrators they are under pressure to deliver because hindi na pwede yung uniform lahat pareho pareho on the basis of what is happening on the ground they have to uh, formulate uh, their plans, their programs, their approaches, and you will notice that uh, when they make the presentations of the dry runs, ibat iba talaga, walang walang magkapareho like an island like Alabat, and then you have you have uh, Isabella, and then you have uh, Mindanao, uh, magkaibang uh, approach and ibat ibang pressure sa kanila, and then the pressures on the policy making makers. The policy implement implementers, the ones who who guide the directions, the constant criticism, the the, the constant kantiao, the constant mura. You have to be very very strong to be able to 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 continue and to believe in what you are doing. So, uh, hindi lang ito, uh, kasi ang guidance counselor is for our learners. Uh, this time we we are also seeking the help of, of professionals and most important we share with each other and this is why we meet very very often uh, virtually uh, maybe three times a week two times a week and uh, aside from the usual uh, telephone calls it's a very uh, no, uh, 
tremendous kind of pressure. And uh, as I said, the most difficult, of course, as far as I in the policy making, is, is the cruelty, the viciousness, which we have to deal with and you have to have inner reserves of strength. And perhaps this is why uh, Secretary um, uh, SOJ of Justice is saying, you know, the faith groups have to come in and these are also very useful. So, iba't ibang mga level ito, hindi, na, hindi ka kaya, hindi ka kasya yung guidance counselor to help us through this. It's not only the learners, Jasmine, it's everybody. Amidst a, a, a political, social, and economic environment, which is not necessarily encouraging or even inspiring, but you should soldier on. You go on uh, because that's what education is all about. That is what being in government is all about. That you have to deal with the complaints, with the criticism, with the indifference, with the viciousness and the cruelty because at the bottom of at the end of the day, our concern is, of course, largely the learners. Uh, this is why I, when I am um, um, asked and people give me opinions and advice, etc., um, I my, uh, my usual answer, and, and, and June is, this time is looking very serious, is why don't we ask the children? You have a grandchild, you ask your grandchild, what does your grandchild really want? Uh, all of us are experts in education. We're surrounded by, by, by criticism, by, by cruelty, by viciousness, by greed. But we have a constitutional duty. And education, teachers have always, uh, have always survived. This is not a... Uh, uh, beyond caring we care for the learners we care for the teachers but we have to care also for our for our officials for our supervisors for for those who coordinate the the work for our janitors and also for our executives sometimes the assumption is that if you are in government therefore you are corrupt and uh, that is uh, of course uh, we all know that is not necessarily uh, true, that everybody is corrupt, everybody is stupid, everybody is inefficient. And to deal with that kind of environment, Jasmine, uh, requires skills in addition to those for, for guidance counselors. Kailan talaga professional for grown-ups for everybody in the department and I suspect also in uh, in the um, in other departments uh, as well if you interview individually our regional directors our central office directors our under secretaries our secretaries our assistant secretaries and they will all tell you they have never worked as hard as they have worked in their entire lives to accomplish in in a matter of six months a huge threat a huge pandemic with all its implications with all its demands with all the indifference with all the criticism i i it, it can this is where, of course, as I said, it's necessary, and this is why we, we hold each other's hands. Parang isang grupo lang sa education ang kawawa, o isang sektor lang ang kawawa. Hindi. All of us are in this. And if we talk about suffering, all of us are suffering. So, so uh, my simple complicated answer to your simple question is we are engaging the help of professionals and and 
but the 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 important thing is the sharing of the experience itself so we talk to each other what did you do when this thing happened to you how did you solve this problem when this happened etc i am facing this the wala na kaming ink wala na kaming papel etc oh uh, wala na wala kaming uh, gadgets uh, ganon uh, palagi na lang kaming kinikritisize uh, parang ang department of education uh, parang na, 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 na segment na isang segment ang kawawang kawawa everybody else is cruel everybody is else is indifferent I don't think that is uh, uh, that is necessarily true, no. So even with all the departments, so uh, I don't know how media can capture that. I don't know how social media can capture that uh, that that situation and share it with those. Because parang uh, uh, I am a taxpayer. Therefore, impress me. Tell me what you are doing. We are doing this, you are doing Ah, that is not enough. Impress me some more. Tell me some more. What are you doing? What are you not doing? There, is there a kind word? Is there a word of encouragement? Not all give words of encouragement. Nothing that a person in government these days is enough. Nothing is satisfactory. And to deal with that, and you are in government, you are a government official, you are a principal, you are a superintendent, you are perhaps a local government official. To deal with that at this time needs great reserves of personal strength. Strength which has to be shared with, with everybody else. Kaya yung sa ano natin, sa sessions natin with the executives, we share uh, our anxieties, not just our triumphs, our, our memoranda, our, our memos, and so on and so forth, but uh, also the, the fears and how we, deal, uh, de how we deal with them. Parang nothing that we ever do is ever enough. Nothing that we ever think about or produce is ever satisfactory. In a very short period of time, six months, you overhaul the entire educational system, and it is not enough. So, uh, your your question about uh, psychosocial uh, issues, yes, our learners are our priority. At the end of the day, it's our learners. Who cares about the learners, even as we debate? Who really worries about them? Who is the loser in all this, uh, uh, all these uh, debates and all this criticism? Is it not the learner? Is it not your pamangkin? It's not. Is it not your apo? Is it not your child? Kaya I ask my friends. You ask your grandchild. So, ayon. It's different uh, uh, this time. And to be able, today is National Heroes Day, but June, and yeah, and, and June was asking to have a message. The usual message, of course, is remember our national heroes, the three most important heroes, Jose, Jose Rizal, Andres Bonifacio, uh, and Babini, oh, uh, and all the others. But I think we have to remember the heroes now. We remember the frontliners, they are our heroes. But we should also look at the people and government who are doing their best, who are serving as much as they can in the midst of vicious and cruel criticism. We, they are also heroes. Our teachers are heroes, but the principals, the superintendents, the district offices, the regional directors, the central office directors who spend sleepless nights, all of them who have to deal with my midnight and early morning calls, they are also heroes. And if we survive, and we will survive, 
they are, it's because these heroes are around and mentioned and appreciated, frequently criticized, but heroes nevertheless. So we celebrate them and we pay tribute to them. Thank you. Well said, ma'am. Bahala lang sa pangito siya, no? Si John. John always tries to restrain. But alam mo, mga matatanda, hindi na yun marirestrain. That was si Jess. Well said, ma'am. Remember, the frontliners are our heroes. But how about those in government? who are excoriated, who are criticized, who are damned, but continue serving. Di ba? Napayak tuloy si Yosef Ann. Oo. And wala nang ibang nasa isip nila kundi learning continuity plan, dry runs, simulations, at saka maghanda pag mag-ring na yung cellphone. Ayan na naman si Briones tumawag. But are they not heroes as well? In addition to our uh, our our teachers, na talagang nagdidile sila ang tuturo, and our learners, everybody loves the learners. But what are we doing to them? How are we shaping them? What kind of examples are we giving to our learners? How are we teaching them? Ayan ang yung normal. Oh, nakangiti si Jess. Ayan, Joe na kalusot na naman ako. Ang pwede kong tagtag? Ano? Pwede po magdagdag ng informasyon? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yung sa guidance counselor, kung maalala nyo, ma'am, may sulat kayo sa DBM. Yes, yes. Requesting for the increase in the salary grade ng ating mga guidance counselor. Kasi as of now, we do have 2,300 plus items. But unfortunately, mga 1,700 lang yung talaga na registered simply because of the Magna Carta for Guidance Counselor. Kaya nga po yung request nyo sa DBM to increase the salary grade ng Guidance Counselor from salary grade 11 to salary grade 13 para maging attractive. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, um, Sir Jun, pahabo lamang po, no? Um, I'm sure marami po ang gusto maging matapang sa mga panahon ngayon, pero not everybody will have that fortitude to to go through with it. Um, meron po bang mga kaso ng mga hindi nakakayanan, tulad ng mga teachers o kaya ng mga estudyante? Ano na po ang naging response dito, if ever, ng DepEd? Uh, this question is addressed to the Secretary, no, Jasmine? Yep. It's psychosocial, too, eh. Yeah. Okay. Even then, po. Okay. Or maybe Yusek Nepo, sir? Parang nasagot na yata ni Bob yun. Uh, hindi, hindi ko na makayanan, eh. So, baka regional directors. Director uh, 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 June. Uh, I think... Yeah. Uh, I think the regional directors uh, can contribute because uh, they are the ones in a proximate uh, a coordination at the ground level. And I think yeah. uh, uh, I think in the central office, uh, uh, we have adopted the uh, work from home and alternative work arrangement where there is a Uh, yung mga kailangan talagang nasa office, continue to work in the office and uh, uh, I think uh, you, you know, part of part of the survival is the support for uh, uh, when exposure happens and, and, and so on I think that that is where the sense of uh, the debit family beyond what is provided uh for officially uh, comes in because I think that that is uh, very crucial that uh, there is no feeling of uh, being abandoned uh, pagka may mga incidents uh, na nangyayari. So I, I guess uh, I think that that's what uh, 
ay, ay, ay keeps us moving forward. But I, I think the regional directors have a lot to uh, Before that, you said na po, and Secretary, if I may, yung policy cover siguro para ma, ma, ano rin, ma lay down. Matagal na. I think uh, March pa lang, April and May, nagbigay na po si Secretary ng guidelines, ang tawag natin, alternative working arrangement. At yun yung sinasabi ni Yusek Nepo na binigyan ng choice ang employees if they want to work from home at kung meron silang mga situ uh, health situation or scenario na hindi talaga sila po pwede na lumabas, ay pinag-usapan na po yan para po matuloy-tuloy na may ginagawa sila at meron silang contribution to our program. So, bawat region, tama rin si Yusek Nepo, bawat region ang makakasagot kung sino sa mga empleyado ang nagkaroon ng voluntary and willingness din na mag-work from home at magkaroon ng uh, yung inahatid, yung mga self-learning uh, modules or materials at saka kung saan sila mas ma 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 magkakaroon ng contribution. Sabi nga natin, iba-iba yan. TV, radio, modules, at saka yung coordination with the local government units, parents, and, co and uh, guardians uh, collaboration as well. So yung alternative working arrangement is the answer at the policy level, pero ang implementation na sa regional director. So yun lang yung segue, probably Director June. Uh, thank you so much, yes. ma'am. I think R.D. Malcolm will have an additional insight po. R.D., go ahead. Pa. Yeah, thank you, Director June. Um, in, in so far as the concern raised by uh, Jasmine no, regarding the, uh, I think she was referring to yung suicides natin or yung suicide cases natin. Uh, so far for NCR, we haven't monitored yet no, any case of uh, suicide among our learners or, or even our teachers. In fact, mas, parang mas madami pa no, prior to the COVID. Yes. Mas marami tayong nare-register na cases. Uh, well, I guess, I think uh, if we would like to look into the situation right now, no, wherein we are, uh, we are under quarantine, no, uh, I, I think ang, ang magandang nangyayari ngayon are, is that our learners are with their families. So the families get to, you know, get together and the parents get to monitor their children more closely. Uh, it, unlike during those times na nasa labas ang mga bata, so there are so many stimu stimuli no, that uh, can trigger. In fact, in NCR, uh, based on the reports that we had no, uh, on in terms of suicide, marami nga doon ang, ang mga bata ay ang kanilang ang nagiging way of uh, you know taking their own lives is tumatalon sila no they were in malls uh, uh, sa isang mga building yung mga ganon so I, I guess if there's one thing that uh, we would like to thank for no even if we are under this kind of situation is that magkakasama ngayon ang mga pamilya and I think that is a very very positive uh, uh, situation for us even for parents. Ang isa lang pong binabantayan natin dito is of course the effect of social media. No? So Because we all know that uh, while at home, many of our learners are basically engaged on, on, on social media. No? And uh, in fact, in NCR, we would like really to you know make a full-blown advocacy program on, on, on cyberbullying. So we are, we are coordinating right now with the likes of IBM, Save the Children, uh, Sturry Foundation. Kasi gusto namin gawing advocacia ito eh. Not just, you know, just, not just reminder or guidelines, but we would like really to create uh, a flagship program on advocating uh, 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 the, the effect of cyberbullying. Uh, I think that is where we should really be focusing on. Kasi yan lang yung sa tingin ko, no? Uh, with children at home, yan yung pinaka maari maging stim stimulus, no? That uh, you know they they get to break down, uh, and then uh, you know do something that uh, uh, is very regrettable. So that's I think that's that's what I can share with with the group now. Thank yeah, you, uh, Director. Chu. Thank you, Secretary. If Pat? I may, if I may come back, uh, I may rejoin the conversation. Um, so much uh, great deal of attention is placed on suicide. Pero sa, sa count natin uh, right now, uh, of course I'm going to be criticized. Uh, isa pang, is, there's isa ang case na alam natin. 
and then there were other factors that hindi uh, that led to the to the act of this young person na uh, she's already past 17 years old uh, i will not give the details no because that is not uh, uh, that is not encouraged pero when ang uh, on record natin is one case ang bigger problem yasmin para sa akin bigger challenge is the overall uh, feeling of insecurity of anxiety uh, 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 mas mas matindi ito mas mas threatening ito uh, as a uh, challenge to us because everyone feels it whether you are a teacher you are a learner you are a principal supervisor regional director this this pressure uh, this fear this anxiety of what is of what we of what we do not know much about uh, ito yung ano yung sabi natin psychosocial uh, um uh, psychosocial uh, events and psychosocial conditions at yun ang uh, i'm saying na that that occupies the minds of, of our of our people uh, hindi lamang ang learners kasi ang minaworry ni secretary of justice ay yung mga yung mga bata no pero itong overall i mean uh, of course these things can lead to 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 suicide kung, kung if they do at all uh, so far as i said from the, since the covid thing we have we have re, uh, recorded one case no pero itong cases of anxiety of worry of pressure of uh, being threatened and not knowing what is in the future etc yung sinasabi natin general na psychosocial yun ang malaking ano challenge that we have to deal with because uh, it's very important for the mental health of our people. General mental health, ang para sa akin, malaking malaking ano. This is why, as as I was saying, uh, 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 it's not as if uh, only one section of society is heroic. Lahat naman heroic, may ginagawa naman talaga. Oo, at sa kal ang like, like us, pero mo nag tremendous ang pressure no August 24 but but they were all determined to to comply ang ang ating mga tao that then the uh, the, the president eased the pressure and and declared October 5 but still it's so it's still very ano uh, very uh, tough the hell it's about 6 months and you overhaul the entire educational system, you change the curriculum, you change the learning modalities, the learning deliveries, you have to uh, you have to convince the parents, you have to convince the local governments, and most important of all, you have to convince media, and you have to impress. And you are the you are the villain. And you are not doing anything. Nothing you ever do is sufficient. That is the uh, is the psychosocial thing that we we are dealing with, and which uh, I take very seriously, and which we try to respond to uh, among our our, our our people, at least in in my department, and I'm sure uh, the other departments are also uh, uh, looking into that. Yung, yung sinasabi nila na it's a, a, a thankless, ano, mayroon bang nag-thank you? Mayroon bang nag-thank you for for all the efforts, for all the studies, for all the sleepless nights, for all the deadlines, for all the creativity, pilitan, squeezing creativity out of, the, <laughs> out of, ano, so, uh, yeah, si John, he is smiling and smiling, but I, I pressure him horrendously, uh, and 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 all uh, all of these challenges. It's not only one section of the Department of Education. It's not only one group. It's the entire department. Yon for me is the big bigger challenge, in addition to the fears of suicide, because. 
uh, the fear of horses, it will lead to that. But yun nga, uh, uh, before these things happen, then you, you have to do something. Kaya mas broader yung ano namin ngayon. We have the webinars for, for, for everybody. Oh, oh. Ayun. If you have a crisis kasi, Jasmine, you know that you always look for somebody to blame, di ba? Uh, and uh, the easiest to blame, of course, is government and government people. And you make no dis don't make any distinction at all. A government, therefore, magnanakaw, therefore, tamad, therefore, walang alam. And therefore, talagang bad guy na bad guy. Walang puso. Oo. Witch na witch talaga. Oo. And uh, uh, itong mga taong ito. But uh, if you look at them and you have met them and you see how hard, how equally hard they work, then perhaps they will also be appreciated and we will add them to the pantheon of, of heroes whom we are bowing down and, down and worshipping and praising to, to, to heavens. And at the end of the day, let us ask ourselves, what are we doing for our children? What have we done to our children? We are, uh, Cambodia is open this month. And, um, you know, uh, I was in a webinar uh, conducted by the UNESCO sometime last week. And we're already talking about futures education. This is a futures education. And we are still fighting and squabbling and screaming and cursing over the opening of classes. And you already have this very uh, interesting discussion about, about education futures. What will the future of education be like? Ako ang uh, gusto ko na sanang sabihin, I'm more worried about what the present of education is going to be. But there are some comforts naman. Who of you are fans of June, the movie? Hindi ikaw, June Godoy. <laughs> One thing I'm looking forward to, no, this December, I'm looking forward to Christmas, of course. I'm looking forward to settling down of the education, uh, our education programs. But thirdly, I'm looking forward to the third version of, of the movie, June, which is based, of course, on the series of Frank Herbert, which is uh, compared to uh, Ibang opposite ng Lord of the Rings. And if you have not read June, D U N E. Uh, I suggest that you, you 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 read it, and there are very important lessons. It's an entire series. Na predict yung ano. So uh, at least there is some comfort. Malapit na next week lalabas na yung trailer na June. <laughs> it's like it's like when ano yung uh, uh, Lord of the Rings was uh, you know highly touted and all that. I bought all the versions. I read and you know, every Christmas basahin mo yung Lord of the Rings and somehow you find comfort. Pero itong June you'll really be very disturbed. That is if it is faithful to the books. So, kung hindi pa ninyo nabasa, I urge you to read it. So, ah, but then, anyway, para uh, when it comes out, at saka ilagay natin yan sa DepEd Commons yung June. Ang nandoon nakita ko yung The Kite, eh, the, the Kite Runner, uh, na linagay sa DepEd Commons. So, ah, uh, Let's now salute our heroes. Oh. Have, have you read the book of ano of the uh, Kokin in question of heroes? But question niya isa isa yung ating mga accepted national heroes. Kung heroes nga ba talaga sila? Oh, oh. And who are the real heroes here? Maybe 
we should uh, also reflect on that. When all of this, we, when we will have settled down already. No. Sige, John, assignment mo yan. Basahin mo ang John. Ilang volumes yan? <laughs> More than 10 volumes. <laughs> From Walang. Herbert, 1965. <laughs> Ayun, Yung uh, certification na ano na yun, na, na, na predict na. So, uh, ano na, as early as 1965, about planets na not a single drop of water. Uh, anyway, bakit ba pinasok ko si June? It's because... Uh, Kapangalan mo, iba lang ang spelling. <laughs> Sige. Maraming salamat, ma'am. Ma'am, ang susunod na magtatanong po ay si John Vic Mateo ng Philippine Star. Go ahead, John Vic. Good morning po. Hi. Ay, turn na po. Hi, ma'am. Uh, siguro po mas address ni po kay Yusek Ann because specific on the budget proposal. But of course, ma'am, you can answer. I know you're very much aware and familiar with the specifics of the <laughs> budget. Uh, yung question ko po is on the flexible learning materials. Kasi I remember you, like, Anne, during your presentation last week, the original proposal of DepEd is very small compared to the what was actually approved yes. by the LPT. What happened po dun sa, dun sa naging discussions? Bakit biglang tumaas to over 15 billion, if I'm not mistaken, yung sa flexible learning materials? And where we, where what are the specifics of where we're, we're going to use this budget? Jan Vic, mas magaling ang teacher kesa sa estudyante. <laughs> so, ito <laughs> muna, but the teacher will... Uh, Babuhin ko yung grado mo. <laughs> yes. Yes, ma'am. Ayaw ko pong mangyari yun. <laughs> so, uh, Jan Vic, just uh, a background, mas malaki talaga ang request namin. The 15 billion is the evaluation of the Department of Budget and Management, not because that's the only amount that they can give, but it also considers the limited resources na meron tayo. Siyempre, sa, kung tutuusin ako, just to give you an information, we propose for 1 trillion pesos budget proposal of the Department of Education. But the total government only has 4.5 trillion as you have seen in my first slide. So, kami naitindihan namin, no? this is the requirement, but the resources is not uh, really enough. Kaya nga meron kami nakalagay ngayon sa program fund. This is the first time in the Department of Education na meron kami nakalinya sa program fund. At ito yung paborito ni Ma'am Liling na i-explain sa inyo. Last week pa ay binigyan na kayo ng lecture about this. Uh, balik ako doon sa tanong mo, Yung learning resources need namin is bigger than the 15 billion that was given to us. Um, actually, we are requesting for 30 billion uh, kasi four quarters ang kasama dito. So, binigyan pa ulit kami ng 5 billion para maging 20 billion yan. However, the 5 billion is in the program fund. But it's a priority once new, re new revenues, uh, new loans, or new re uh, resources will come in. Yun yung nakalagay doon. But ang um, sabi ko nga rin, uh, national government counterpart lang ito, Jad VK. Eh. Maraming, maraming strategy para mapondohan ang edukasyon. Kasama ang local government, meron tayong SEF, kaya po, mala, ma, ano rin, closely coordinating din kami with the ILG, DBM, and all the local government units. Kasi kung mapaprioritize din natin yung SEF, malaki rin yung contribution para sa ating learning resources. At meron din tayong uh, mga development partners. At meron din tayong uh, Brigada Eskwela. Uh, isa pa sa ginagawa ngayon ng curriculum at ng Office of the Secretary ay yung pag-rationalize ng paggawa uh, rin ng SLM. Right now, um, mabilisan yung pangyayari. We were only given two to three months to prepare for this. At pag sinabi mo nga mabilisan, yung, yung, um, yung uh, value for money Yung demand and supply na sinasabi ni Secretary nung uh, previous uh, press con, mas mahal. Kasi, kailangan mo na ngayon. Parang rush work. Kung kailangan mo ngayon, mas mahal. Pero if we will prepare for the next school year and we have the budget right now, mas makakagawa tayo ng paraan na bumaba ang cost at mas maganda yung magiging packaging dito. That's the reason why with the budget that we have for now, ay gumagawa na kami ng mga policies and collaboration 
with all the stakeholders para maging mas maganda ang quality, mas mabilis na mapoproduce, at mas mababa ang presyo na kalalabasan. Doon, yun ma'am. Ang pwede uh, okay. ma Oh, sige, ikaw muna, Nepon, then ako, I will also add my own. Uh, uh, well, the, the short answer really is uh, next year uh, is a continuation of the learning continuity plan. And uh, this uh, FLOs, when the NEP was done, uh, was the pre-COVID pa noong uh, mag... Uh, mag uh, submit dyan. At yan dati ay nasa alternative delivery modes at saka alternative learning system lamang. Uh, but uh, this year, with the adjustment in the budget for the current year, ay dyan hinaus itong uh, learning continuity plan with all the adjustments. And uh, for all intents, next uh, year, fiscal year, we'll still cover uh, the uh, third and fourth quarters of uh, uh, the LCP, uh, the second half of the, uh, uh, what you call this, of the 2020-2021. And uh, uh, the budgets that were uh, provided to the ground is really for just the four, first and second quarter. So we still have the third and fourth quarter under the FLOs. And uh, really, we don't know yet what the situation will be in the uh, next school year. I mean, we, we don't know how COVID would be. Uh, so probably the distance learning uh, option uh, will still be a feature uh, as a response to COVID even for the next school year. But we also stated that uh, uh, a, the delivery of education will not return to what it used to be even uh, post-COVID. I think there will be uh, some of the innovations that are being adopted now will become a, few, a feature also of how uh, uh, education is uh, delivered even post-COVID. Uh, Thank you. Dagdag uh, lang, this is at another level. Uh, you, you know, during our press conferences, we are very frank and candid with you. We tell you as much as we can because... That is uh, our obligation. But uh, we also wonder how much of it really goes out and reaches the, uh, the intended uh, recipients of this news. Uh, maybe one hour of discussions ends up with, uh, you know, uh, and competes with uh, other, other concerns. Kung ilan lang ang lalabas, but we exert so much. We, we really... Uh, exert a lot of effort. Anyway, from another level, tama si Nepo at saka si, ano, si uh, Yosek Ann <coughs> on, on, on this issue. But from sa pin, pinakamataas na policy level, when we were, alam mo yung learning continuity plan, parang one month lang siguro yun, Nepo. Pag, paggawa nun, kasi we were perhaps at the time, the only and the earliest, no, pag-declare ng, ano, ng pandemic, nag-ano kaagad ng learning continuity plan because we did not want uh, learning to, to, we wanted learning to continue. Tapos, nag-isip na ng mga methodologies, that was very wide debate, mga one or two months of debate yan within the, the, the department. Ngayon, Tayo, we are all advocates of knowledge-based uh, decisions. And so, tiningnan natin, what does the landscape look like? Nakita natin na, for example, uh, how many millions of, of cell phones are, are there? How many millions of televisions are there? How many... Uh, millions of teachers have laptops? and desktops and cell phones, which I myself have seen. So, ang assumption, ang, ang thinking naman, that kasi yung combination nga ng online, online TV, radio, etc., there would be a substantial and quite a substantial demand for online. 
because we like to think that we are already experts in online or our children know no eh, ilang cell phones nila our teachers have ilang cell phones they have their desktop they have their laptops they're carrying them all around in various colors etc etc so one can draw the conclusion na pag mag online ka sa delivery obra yan because people are not exactly ignorant about online or about ICT. So, ang assumption, ang assumption is that uh, there will really be a demand for it. Ako, I thought kasi ang concentration itong all of these gadgets and all these new things, pa pati yung number ng smartphones, nakuha namin yan kung ilang milyong smartphones are floating around, eh, sabi namin, oobra ang online. Now, nung nag-ano na, nag-survey na sa enrollment, so comes enrollment. Sa enrollment, tinanong yung parents at yung mga bata kung anong preference nila. Kasi yung sabi namin, we will adjust to the to the preference where, the, where everyone is comfortable with. Ay, lumabas ay modular. I was a bit surprised, especially in NCR, because I thought... At the rate all the kids are, uh, ano, are uh, playing with their, with their cell phones and the teachers are, are into Facebook how many hours a day, into Twitter and all the songs, the dramas, the jokes, etc., etc., circulating all the articles going around in social media, that uh, there would be a, 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 a big demand. Ang nangyari doon, halos hati-hati. For more, which, as I said, surprised me, especially for NCR. Even if NCR wanted modular, which means printed. Now, between gadgets and printed, in the long run, mas, ano, mas, mas mahal ang printed. At saka mas, uh, mas komplikado. Kasi uh, you go through the very complicated uh, procurement process and, uh, and, and so on and so forth. At the come cost is very much higher. That is at least that's what I learned from Yusikan. Mas, mas mahal ang printed. And, and, and that, of course, as I said, affected, of course, our, our, our budget. And so what made me realize, Jan Vic, is that Siguro right now, even as we are always playing with our smartphones and exchanging jokes and gossip and stories and scandals and lies and curses, eh, that is how we look at, at the usefulness of all these gadgets, not necessarily for learning, but all these online things, all these ICT things for learning, parang hindi, hindi na masyadong na ano sa consciousness ng tao for Filipinos learning is still modular yun ang yun ang lumabas na maski na sabihin mo the entire country is the texting capital of the world you can text etc etc as long as mayroon kang connectivity pero you cannot hindi they are not thinking in terms of texting learning or, or testing who, who wrote who wrote this series this really fantastic series of books named June or who wrote the Lord of the Rings hindi hindi not necessarily yun ang ano iba mga recipe ano ano bang kinain mo kanina sinong nakita mo mga ganon ganon hindi we don't look at it as a tool for education and Kaya nga, remember last time, June, June as in June Godoy, I said na we, we, we are having a communications uh, challenge na to, to emphasize to our learners, to emphasize to our teachers, our executives, that online, all these gadgets are also for transmitting education and learning and not only for gossip and fake news or for movies which I like or for music which I really 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 love or for YouTube or for Netflix so uh, 
that, that is an aspect which uh, uh, I, at my level, uh, realize. You may have how many millions has been attended? 87% of our teachers have gadgets, actually, have tablets, and, and, and they, have, uh, they have tablets, they have uh, um, uh, computers. And you say, how many millions of people have smartphones? And how many millions of, of people watch, watch TV? But they don't look at it as education. At saka sabihin mo, eh, bakit hindi niya nakita, et cetera, et cetera. When you only have how many months to do it, yung convincing side, yung sabi ko, bringing in the parents to cooperate, bringing in the local governments to cooperate even more, or bringing in uh, the deaf and family to cooperate even more and perhaps let go of their suspicions. Uh, Sabay-sabay mo yan lahat gagawin in, in, in a few months' time when one half of your staff is on skeleton and etc. So, uh, um, ayun. Na, na, I finally, na, nakita ko yan. When, when Yusik Ann was telling me, mas mahal ang modular, sabi ko, paano yan? Dahil ang assumption natin, uh, Ang initial expense sa uh, ano diyan big sa ano halimbawa for for Manila alone yung pamigay nila ng gadgets for for how many thousand chil uh, learners and how many thousand teachers that's 1.2 billion kaya nga sabi ko nga sa Neda if we o once we open our schools the impact on the economy will be that much ano ngayon sa uh, lahat nagsasabi it's nearly impossible to buy a computer at this time because aside from what the schools will be giving, pay, the children want their very own computers as well. They want their very own cell phones, kailangan smartphone, etc. Uh, ang, ang ganon. Ang hirap daw ngayon bumili talaga. So, may effect yun sa Ang nag, magbe-benefit nitong input sa economy, sa, G, sa ating ano, uh, will all be the transactions on, on, on the gadgets and the printing of the modules. Kaya yung demand ng paper, etc., etc. So, uh, I ask for your cooperation. I ask for your help in the media to place perhaps greater emphasis on the usefulness of of all these wonderful gadgets which the future and the present is providing us to uh, to uh, to share learning to communicate learning to communicate facts and truth oh, oh. and uh, hindi it's of course it's still fun uh, I, I love watching all, all, all the, the movies. I love reading all the books. I love listening to the, to the, to the music. And if I have a chance, when somebody drops by me and we talk about ballet, I always insist, "Hi, na I know. Have you watched Partacus? Which probably will take time to be shown in the Philippines because the cast here, panay lalaki in Spartacus. It's very moving, very powerful. Ang ganda ng music ni Katsachurian, sabihin ko yan. But, uh, but beyond that, as learning, teaching of mathematics or of science, hindi, hindi, hindi pa uh, accepted. And that will take time. And it will take more than your usual six months. Oh, oh yun. Yun, yun ang ano ko, from, from where I am. And I saw it only when we were already discussing costs and the budget. Kaya na, 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 nagulat ako na ganun kalaki. When, ilang, ilang millions yun, uh, uh, Yosik An, ang ating estimate for the, re, for the reading materials. At saka yung paper. Uh, so ayo yun um, that's part of the explanation as to how you get it out when you make your report uh, Jan Vic, that is that is the challenge <laughs> okay thank you ma'am uh, follow up na lang po yeah. on mahabang answer because ano oh, 
that is the function of education. Make people think. Mag-isip mag and not just accept what is given. And then, and, and, yun, like uh, as I said, because just because everybody is using cell phones and they have hundreds of millions of people using tablets, etc., including our teachers or learners, does not mean that... Uh, they will prefer it kasi nung lumabas sa, sa survey, gusto pa rin nilang modular. That's, 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 and that is uh, what came out. That, that is part of the explanation. In addition to the valid explanations of NEPO and music. And, okay, and a serious residual dahil may communications, ano na naman siya, project. <laughs> okay. Follow up. Na lang right. on, regarding sa upcoming house deliberations on the proposed budget, are there specific items that we would request na sana idagdag sa budget ng DepEd? I understand na meron tayong unprogrammed funds, but at least based on the explanation ni Yusek and sa naintindihan ko, hindi ito assured it would be based on whether we have additional loans or mataas na revenue. Meron po bang mga specific items dun sa, sa nasa unprogrammed funds that we would prefer na ilagay na talaga ng mga lawmakers dun sa actual budget. Ma'am, very good na isudyante si Jan Vick. Kasi alam na niya yung next move natin. Uh, that is actually what we will also appeal to Congress na kung po pwede from unprogram fund ay ilipat sa program fund para mas uh, assured kami that all of the items that you, I, you have seen, I, I listed all the programs na nasaan program fund are all very important. The voucher program, the learning resources, the uh, the provision of electricity to our learners in some areas. Uh, these are all important. So, ang una, priority, alam namin nasaan program fund, baka pwedeng ilipat sa program fund. And then the others will be uh, some of the benefits that um, were given to our teachers but uh, unfortunately are not included in the 2021 MEP. For example, the annual medical exam, um, the secretary is about to issue a, uh, a 500 peso per teacher. Although this is very small, pag kasi kinumpit mo to, John V, 500 pesos per teacher is equivalent to 500 million in that end. So sana ma-include din. At saka yung every year na binibigay na rin ni secretary, yung World Teachers Day incentive, that's 1,000 pesos per teacher. So that's equivalent to 1 billion as well. Yung aming cash allowance for the teacher is, as, is still at 3,500. So ito yung sumasagot sa mga ibang pangangailangan ng teacher. And it's up to Congress, actually. Pag tinatanong kami, sinasabi namin na ito yung mga nakapasok dyan. But uh, of course, pag dinibayad mo by 10 months na nagtuturo ang teacher, uh, 3,500 is equivalent to 350 per month. So these are the things na uh, hindi siya nakasama. But uh, alam naman natin, pag kami pinasok ka, mayroong mawawalan. At yon ang politics ng budget. At uh, yan ang, uh, ang uh, kagalingan din kung bakit ako ay natuto sa NC Pag through uh, Secretary Liling Briones na talagang kailangan balansihin ang lahat. Kasi if you want uh, something to be added uh, funding, sino naman ang mawawalan at sino ang, ba, ang, ang mawawala doon sa priority. So, uh, yun po. Right now, yun po yung uh, gagawin natin. But uh, nag-post planning na kami, Jan Vick, for information of everyone. With this level of ba budget, ay gumagawa na kami ng prioritization, uh, gumagawa na tayo ng strategy para sabi nga natin yung hindi na pondohan niya yung taon na ito ay ma maumpisahan na ngayon pa lamang. Kagaya ng minimum health standard, communication, internet connection, ay isasama natin doon sa kung ano man ang meron tayo sa level na to. Prioritization is the key. And collaboration is another one. Thank, Thank you. you. Just want to clarify. Uh, so actually, that, actually, uh, Jan Vick, uh, we are conflicted in the Department of Education because we understand the financial situation of the national government. Because uh, right now, uh, uh, the the budgets of the various departments, yung mga proposed nila, have to be uh, have to be reduced. Kasi uh, the government is uh, avoiding uh, uh, um, dependence on on external sources. 
So, sana yan ako, like Bayanihan 1, nagko-contribute yung mga different uh, uh, agencies no, from their budgets. Pero binalik naman kung they have Bayanihan expenses. So, yun din ang nangyayari, nangyayari dito. Kasi, balansihan mo din yan. The other one, the other option, of course, is to go to your famous stimulus fund. And, and, and that, the stimulus fund, that's, that's, that, that has very, uh, uh, of course, uh, that mar maraming implications yan, no? uh, which was resorted to in early uh, in, in earlier administrations and the impacts of which we are still feeling right now. Kaya conflict kami in the sense that we understand uh, we know the, the very tough decisions that uh, the Department of Budget and Management have, has, to, has to make because they want to rein in uh, uh, um, uh, dependence, for example, on on, on external sources. Because uh, there, kita kita may preference for internally generated sources, uh, and there, there is a reason for that. So, uh, kami uh, uh, as department, of course, we want more. We want more because ganon naman ang law sa economics. Uh, your 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 I uh, know the resources of it given to you are never enough no but at the same time we are aware that uh, the government also has to uh, be very prudent and, and careful in the terms of the overall impact of a budget for this year in the light of the pandemic and and you can uh, appreciate uh, the uh, the uh, pressure that uh, government uh, is exerting on, on various uh, agencies and even all of us na to ano, to contribute to the to the economy pag mag open up ng economy there is a risk pero let us follow all the health things so that we can open up the economy and create more jobs and laki ng impact yan sa education as i said ang laki din ng contribution ng education uh, in terms of, of this economic growth and it's also expl explains our anxiety and our our uh, insistence and persistence about continuing education it's not uh, be of course pinaka importante yung learn uh, the students we ayo nothing maiwanan ng ating learners but at the same time we know that education is a major player in the economy and uh, Anyone can see that. Just look at the size of the budget itself. Oh, sige. Na lecture and to si Jan B. How much of that will come out in your write up? A man. What the budget, ma'am? Alam ni Yusek Ann. Yusek Ann, yung ano lang, you mentioned kasi na internet and communication. Just to clarify lang, is this internet and communication expenses? May nakalodge po ba na budget? For allowance ba ito ng teachers or mas communication and internet ng schools? Just to clarify. Yes, thank you for that question, Jan B. Kasi uh, yung pagbigay ng allowance is not in the hands of DepEd. The allowances are, are authorized through a law or through a policy ng civil service, DBM, at COA. At sinare uh, uh, ko naman sa inyo na nagbigay na kami, na sumulat na kami sa tatlong ahensya na ito. Na gusto man natin na bigyan ang mga teachers ay hindi kami allowed dahil ang allowances ay kailangan mayroong basis, may legal basis. So right now, ang communication namin is treated as an expense. So kailangan natin magkaroon ng procurement o kaya may mga resibo o kaya ay talagang parte ng uh, programa. Pero bilang bibigay bilang allowance ay kami ay limited sa kung ano yung bibigay sa amin na authorization. But as an update, I, as I told you, officially, sumulat na kami sa COA, sa DBM, at nagkakaroon na po ng meetings uh, between and among these agencies. Ang good news dito, hindi lang DepEd ang makikinabang, buong gobyerno. Kasi nagbago na ang, ano, ang transaksyon, nagbago na ang uh, paggawa ng uh, pagtrabaho ng mga tao sa gobyerno. Kagaya nitong virtual meeting na to, hindi to kasama sa expenses na, 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 na plano ng gobyerno. Pero ang mga empleyado ay sarili-sariling gumagawa o gumagasta. 
at their own houses, di ba, ng mga internet connection and the uh, other expenses. Ang isa pang naging problema dyan, yung policy na meron tayo ngayon, ay nagre-require na mag-travel ang mga empleyado para maka-reimburse ka. Eh, hindi ka nga lalabas eh. So, pa, ano ngayon ang basis ng reimbursement? So, ito ay yung mga polisiya na amin na pong uh, pinagpaalam sa mga ahensya na sana ay magkaroon ng bagong polisiya para dito. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, John Vic. Uh, maraming salamat, ma'am. Ang susunod po na magtatanong dito ay si... Uh, Uh, Bones, no sorry, uh, Meg Adonis ng uh, Philippine Daily Inquirer. Meg? Hi, uh, good afternoon po. I would like to ask an update lang po about the computerization program. Uh, it was mentioned before na 93% na daw po ang may gadgets. Uh, paano na po ang distribution nito sa last mile schools, yung last 7% schools po nationwide? Uh, thank you po. I think, Meg, the, the best person to answer that would be you, Sek Elaine Pasqua, but unfortunately, uh, wala siya dito, but we'll send the response uh, as soon as possible. We'll take note of your question. Yep. Is there any uh, other... Eh? Y- yung sa last mile schools, uh, we, we talk about computerization, di ba? So that means gadgets, that means connectivity. Uh, karamihan ng mga last mile schools, uh, wala silang connectivity. O kung meron man, eh, worse than what we have in in uh, in the urban uh, places. Problema yung connectivity. Kaya nga, ang ang proposal nga namin, kami ni Yusek Alain, alam ito ni Yusek An, uh, na sinabi namin sa Secretary of Finance na itong sa mga last mile schools, mas mabisa ang radyo. At saka kung radyo, hindi yung mga luma na yung patapon na radyo na hindi na umandar na ipamimigay. Ang, ang sinasuggest namin, una, it has to be solar powered. Dahil wala namang kuryente itong mga last mile schools. Kaya yung computerization program will, be, will not be all that effective. Parang yun na ang given. Tapos, pa, pangadlawa ay kailangan waterproof. Dahil may ulan, may baha, may lindol sa mga lugar na, uh, na ito. Pangatlo, mayroong certain level of, of ano, yung hindi ko to alam, yung mga specifics. Uh, hindi lang yung uh, maliliit na radyo na nakikita natin na uh, tagwa 100 pesos. Pero yung mga makakatanggap naman at um, ng mga lessons na i-share natin. So we have a special program for the last mile schools uh, lalo na uh, yung walang ano connectivity kasi yung computerization program hindi hindi makaobra will not work unless mayroon namang may mga lugar halimbawa uh, in Sarangani sa isla or in Siliman uh, may mga lugar na naka-work out sila na pwede kang mag-transmit without a platform, whatever. Hindi ko yan alam, basta mayroong mga ano, uh, innovations ang ginagawa. Pero largely, ang nakikita namin, uh, radio pa rin, but not your ordinary second-hand radio na um, hingi tayo ng contributions. Kailangan din naman yung something which will last. At saka hindi lamang may radyo ang pupil, pati ang, bat, ang teacher dapat uh, meron. At saka mayroong transmission facilities. So, uh, uh, sa mga municipalities, etc. At saka ang laki ng tulong dito ng local governments. Dito malaki ang papel ng local governments pag set up ng ano, uh, radio facilities to the last mile schools. But uh, really, thank you for your for for caring for the last mile schools and and your your interest. Uh, hindi namin sila binibita bitiwan. They're always uh, in our mind. Uh, so ayon, it's more radio. Dahil nga sa connectivity, mag computerization program ka. Kung wala namang connectivity, then uh, it will it will not uh, work at all. Okay. So, that's my, that's our answer. <coughs> right. uh, thanks, Meg. Meg, uh, may baka kang katanungan? Uh, that would be all po, sir, since nasagot na po yung ibang questions earlier. Thank you po. 
Alright, thanks Meg. Uh, thank you so much ma'am. Ma'am, ang susunod ay si Bon sa uh, magsambol ng Rappler po. Bon? Okay. Uh, good afternoon po, Secretary. Siguro this question will be addressed to uh, Yusek Dads. Is he yeah, available? Yeah, Yusek Dads is there. Nakita ko smiling as always. <laughs> okay. By uh, the way, awarded dyan ng civil service. <laughs> as an outstanding <laughs> ano, <laughs> civil servant. <laughs> And uh, baka, this has been addressed in previous pressers, pero para lang siguro, baka na-miss ko to, or para lang siguro ma-refresh na din. Uh, kasi marami po mga nagtatanong ng magulang as well as mga students na din. What subjects will be taught this year po ba? May pagbabago po ba? Will there be changes? Bonds? Apo. Good afternoon, Ma'am Liting. Good afternoon, everyone. Wala po tayong binawas na subjects. Okay. Tawa natin yung mga learning competencies sa mga learning areas ang uh, ni-review natin at nabawasan nga as already announced, 40% lang ng ating existing learning competencies ang ituturo ngayon. So we will still proceed with all the learning areas pero namotor namin na may mga kanya-kanyang strategy ang mga ano local field units natin, mga division offices, mga paaralan Katulad nung mga pinag-uusapan namin a long time ago pa internally, kasi pwede kasi na hindi sa isang araw walong subject ulit ang bata. Pwede uh-uh. kasing ang pwedeng dalawa, pero basta ang pagkatapos ng isang markahan, isang grading period, na-cover na nila itong uh, iba-ibang learning areas na ito. So, yung mga ganun, pinayagan niya ng aming tanggapan because we really have to be very flexible. In fact, may na-monitor kaming isang division na apat lang muna per uh, per month. Ang mm. sabihin nito, um, magagamit ng dalawang bata ang printed self-learning modules. Okay. Kung nag-decide silang dalawa lang, um, ang maaarali ng bawat uh, bata sa isang linggo, Pwede rin yun. But, basta ang sinasabi na uh, in a grading period, i-cover yung walo, pero yung strategy, kanya-kanya sila. Okay. okay. So, just to be clear, wala pong mababago kung ano yung mga subjects nila pre-pandemic, yun pa rin yung gagamitin natin ngayon sa kasalukuyan na taon. Tama po ba? Yes, Bones. Pero, alibawa, yung ELE uh, ay may mga adjustments na gagawin kasi may mga may mga gawain talaga ang bata na kailangan uh, nandun sa school. So itong mga po ang mga uh, pinag-uusapan pa kung paano mas mag- mabisang ma-deliver uh, competencies na may um, kailangan yung mga demo classes na yan at actual performance of certain tasks na may mga equipment na kailangan. Uh, ito yung uh, sabi natin ay uh, talagang gagawaan ng mga istratehiya na ang competencies ay natututunan pa rin. So, walang babaguhin, walang inalis na learning area. Uh, ang pinawasan yung competencies kasi nakatuon tayo ngayon sa most essential learning competencies. Ito yung foundational competencies, yung mga kailangan-kailangan para uh, maging lifelong learners sila at uh, makakwalify para ma-promote sa next grade uh, dating ng susunod na pasukan. Okay. Okay pa. Thank you po, Yusek Dad. Okay. Uh, for my next question po, siguro kay Yusek Ann. Hello po. Present. Apo. Ayun din. <laughs> Yusek Ann, good afternoon. Ayun, ah, tanong ko lang din kasi parang uh, dun sa presentation yun ng budget kanina, para may nakita ko na naka-alat for the feeding program. I'm just curious lang din po, paano, how, paano po kaya mangyayari yung feeding program and then may allotted budget tayo given na everything will be done remotely or distance learning. So how, paano po kaya magkakaroon po ba ng sort of ayuda to mga estudyante? Yes, Bon. So very important din yung question mo. Pati ang feeding program ay nagkaroon ng adjustment. Ibig sabihin, we have to customize. Uh, kasama yan sa kung paano natin ginawa yung learning delivery. Pati ang feed, feeding program ay magkakaroon din ng customized implementation. Uh, meron tayong uh, Execom lead na... Uh, in charge sa ating feeding program. Uh, ito rin ay uh, uh, pinapamahalaan ng isang opisina 
sa ating Department of Education, meron din pong na-issue na bagong guidelines kung paano ito gagawin. Kung dati, nagluluto ang mga teacher, mga magulang, tapos ang mga bata habang nasa eskolahan ay kumakain, ngayon ay ito ay i-deliver sa mga bahay. Mm. Depende, uh, depende sa public health situation ng ating mga eskolahan. So, kung ano po yung uh, compliant with the minimum health standard, yun ang gagawin natin. Kung meron naman po na uh, coordination with the local government unit, some of them already had a MOA, nagkaroon na ng memorandum of agreement kung paano ito uh, i-deliver at saka i-implement. Uh, so, wala pong isang modelo kung paano gagawin bonds. Pareho ito ng learning continuity plan natin na nagkakaroon ng consultation sa mga magulang, sa local government unit, at kung paano mapa mapagpapatuloy. Right now, sa Pangasinan, nakakita ako ng uh, kahit hindi pa ho nagsisimula ang pasukan, ay nagpamigay na ho ng gatas at ng tinapay. Meron po tinatawag sila ngayon na Nutriban. Noong araw, di ba, meron tayong Nutriban mamaliling. Uh, ina inano po yan ngayon, ni-revive at uh, mag magbibigay po tayo kasi hindi na, sabi nga ni Ma'am Lili, hindi natin pwede pabayaan ang mga kabataan, lalo na yung uh, kasama sa aming programa na feeding program. Ang uh, isa pa sa uh, challenges ngayon ay yung pag-monitor sa kanila kasi sila nga ay nasa mga bahay nila. So, kasi dagdag ito sa mga administrative function na naka, uh, sala, nakasalalay ngayon sa Department of Education. But uh, siguro, Bon, sa susunod na mga press uh, con namin, ay uh, ito naman yung i-feature namin para magkaroon tayo ng pagkakataon na matanong in details yung iba pa mga tanong ninyo about this program. Right now, yun pa lang ang masishare ko kasi okay. yung pa lang yung uh, aprobahan ni Secretary Liling Briones, yung mga adjustment. But definitely, tuloy. Kaya nga, meron tayong 1.7, uh, if I'm not mistaken, na mga beneficiaries ng school feeding program natin. <laughs> Alright. Thank you so much, Bons. Uh, Next po ay si Dante Amante ng UNTV. Dante, go ahead. Sino? Si Dante Amante ng uh, UNTV, ma'am. Ah, yes, yes. Dante's Inferno. <laughs> <laughs> In the original. <laughs> Dante, nakamute ka ata. Naka Wala. Walang sound. Ay, sorry po. Maayang hapon, Secretary. Magandang okay, hapon. Maayang hapon. Ako, kumusta? Hello lang, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Ang uh, tanong ko po is itong, uh, gusto ko lang malaman kung bakit po uh, itong budget ng pag-hire po natin ng mga additional uh, personnel po, lumaki ng 90.42% 90 yung uh, uh, budget considering po na 1,000 lang naman ang i-hire natin. The same po, po nitong uh, 2020. Siguro kayo sa saan po. 10,000 po yun, uh, Sir Dante. Hindi 1,000. 10,000 uh, yes, positions. Apo, uh, 10,000. And then, nitong 2020, 10,000 din po, ma'am. Yes. And there was an increase, not a decrease. An increase po ang uh, increase. budget for allocation of new teaching positions. Tumaas po siya ng... Ta, ilan po yung tinaas, ma'am? Nine? Nine thousand? Next year, we will have ten thousand new teaching positions. It's the same as what we have this year. Meron din kaming bagong ten thousand new positions. Hmm. Yes, ma'am. Ang question ko po kasi is, ang budget nila is uh, tumaas po ng halos ninety percent uh, po. Ano pong uh, pinag-iba niya yan, ma'am? Bakit po mas mataas ang budget nitong uh, next year po? Dante, baka ano na lang, uh, you have my number, we can call each other. Uh, baka iba lang yung Yusek? slide mo. Uh -uh, sige. Yusek, na, uh, Anne, hindi ka, di ba sa kwan yun, salary adjustment? Uh, hindi ko nga rin maano kung anong slide ni Dante eh. Slide number ano Dante? Kasi, uh, ano ka nakakaintindihan okay. tayo. Opo. Itong... Ano ba ito? Wait lang ha. Sa six. Apo ma'am. Uh, Ayan. 
Dante, slide number six. New school personnel. Opo, ma'am. Yung okay. budget po. Uh -oh. Yung budget kasi may kasamang salary increase. Uh, Na-approbahan na kasi na every year uh, for the next three years. Uh, ako, I'm not sure. Baka next four years. Ay merong budget increase or may salary increase ang mga guro. So, habang nag-create ka ng mga position, tumataas din yung kanilang mga salaries, allowances, benefits. At meron pong nakalagay dyan na Uh, pera para po uh, kung uh, mag-hire ka kasi next year iba na yung salary grade tapos meron din po kasama rito uh, other question po yung para teachers na nabanggit ni Secretary Liling nung nakaraan may update na po ba tayo and ilan po yung i-hire nating uh, para teachers na mag-serve as uh, tutors po natin yeah. you suggest Mateo probably has the uh, details on this uh, Dante Yeah, Dante, yung guidelines pa rin, pinapinalize, patapos na, no? patapos na yung uh, guidelines natin on the hiring of para teachers. So that's the update pa rin. Once, uh, kuan, masign yan, we will uh, disseminate it to the field. Thank you. Uh, last question na lang po, uh, parang follow up na lang po, clarification. Mas, pwede po ko bang masabi na kaya tumaas yung ating uh, proposed budget dahil sa computerization program and then dito sa mga learning materials na gagamitin, lalo na mga printed modules, tama po ba? Dante, tumaas ang budget natin. Una, dahil may dagdag na sweldo because of the salary standardization law. Uh, nandiyan ang about 1 million na mga DepEd employees. Kami ang pinakamalaki sa buong gobyerno. 800,000 dyan ay mga guro, ang iba ay mga non-teaching or teaching-related position. Uh, pangalawa, may 4 billion na increase sa DepEd Computerization Program. Meron din kami 15 billion na increase para sa learning resources. At yung iba pang mga detalye ay nasa slide 7 ng uh, ating briefing. Thank you. Salamat po. Salamat, Secretary. Mayong hapon. All right, thank you so much, uh, Yusek and, and, and Dante. Uh, we have last three uh, from our friends in the media, po, but I would like to ask them to ask uh, just one question each because we're running out of time. Um, sorry, I skipped Marian Pala Enriquez of TV5. Marian, go ahead. Hi, sir. Yep. Uh, good afternoon. Po. Um, my question po would be regarding uh, po dito sa second tranche of our uh, salary increase para sa ating mga teachers. No good news po ito. Pero um, question lang po, doon sa 10,000 po na ngayon na uh, possessions po, Um, ilan po kaya yung may mga nag-apply from private uh, uh, private schools? Ma'am? Meron po ba tayong update on that? Uh, yes, oo, nasa, uh, yan, tama uh, si Yusek Jess, nasa regional office po yan. Sige, Yusek Jess. Yeah, uh, so far wala pa tayo kasi kung ano, ongoing yung uh, selection, no? Uh, kung, mapa, kung maalala nyo, yung hiring nito nag-start nag pa way back in uh, as early as March yata. No? Uh, tapos while waiting for the, the slots itself. So we will uh, know later on kung ilan yung nag-apply from the private school. I hope you don't mind. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Dagdag ko, lang, dagdag ko lang na information. Even before COVID, even before the pandemic, uh, I already warned one year pa lang ako, less than a year, na may migration kami ang napapansin from the private sector to the public sector. And uh, ang isa sa pinakaano na reason is yung gap ng ano, salaries and benefits ng public school teacher vis-a-vis -vis the private school teacher. Ang nangyayari kasi, pag pumapasa na sila sa ating um, teacher examinations, nag apply ka agad sa public school. So, um, yun ang uh, pinoint out ko. Pero siyempre, ang daming nagalit, may noro ako, etc. Liling sinungaling, liling teliling. Pero yun ang katotohanan. Sinabi ko na na uh, dapat tingnan yung sitwasyon na yan. Hindi naman, wala naman, ka, hindi naman kami ang mag, uh, ano lang solusyon yan na uh, lumalawak ang, ano, ang gap ng mga private school teachers with the public school teachers. Nakita ko yan dahil naglibot kasi ako eh sa mga schools. Bumibisita ako ng private schools at saka public schools. Yung gap na yan, if I may say so, hindi ko ito teritoryo, uh, also exists in health na sinasabi nga din, eh, recognize na 
mayroon ding moral issue sa ating mga frontliners na nasa private hospitals vis-a-vis -vis those who are in the public hospitals. Even as we uh, we uh, say na underpaid yung nasa public, mukhang uh, ang private uh, sector people uh, have a uh, have the same have have that problem uh, as well so uh, wala bang covid issue na yan ang ang uh, inaasahan lang natin na kung mag-aano ng economy kung mag-improve na ang economy makahabol ang mga private schools at may gagawin naman sila tungkol sa mga salaries ng kanilang mga uh, tauhan at sa benefits kasi doon nagtatalo sa ano eh sa benefits Saka tanungin mo yung average na nag, ano, gustong magturo o gustong magtrabaho bilang teacher, ang tendency talaga ay sasabihin nila na ano, nakikita nila na mayroong, mayroong gap and that gap might in, uh, increase if there are no policy uh, solutions uh, worked out yun. Maraming salamat, ma'am. Uh, sorry, sir, last lang. Okay, Clari go. Sorry. Clarify ko lang po yung um, teacher-student ratio. Kasi po, um, uh, NCUR Regional Director, uh, Sir Malcolm Garma, said po na 47,557 classes on or, uh, organized based on enrollment. So, ang average class size po uh, for elementary is 45, uh, sa junior high, 45, 41, sa senior high. So, Paano po natin to gagawin? Uh, clarify ko lang, tama po ba kung 1 is to 35 po, apat ang ideal? Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so you okay. uh, si Malcolm. Yes. Uh, si Director Malcolm kasi NCR yung nili refer. Mm. Yes. Uh, well, we, we deem it necessary to really include, no, doon sa readiness matrix namin, yung, uh, yung determination ng class sizes natin given the enrollment figures natin. So the reason why we would like to consider this because we just we want to know how the classes will be managed now uh, given that we are using the different uh, modality, no, which is the distance learning. So right now, uh, ano lang ito, straight straight uh, organizing lang ito. So, dinidivide muna natin in terms of the number of uh, uh, classes that uh, uh, we would like to organize in each school. Tapos, based on the total number of students, ilan ngayon ang magiging laman per class. Per class? So, ito naman sa teacher ratio, if you observe in our data, the teacher ratio is lower than the average class size because... There are some grade levels na hindi naman talaga one is to one yung teacher natin. But uh, for example, in the higher grade learners, uh, hindi lang isang teacher ang hahawak ng klase natin. So in the absence of any uh, established parameter or class on, on, on class sizes on how to uh, organize our classes now that we are in the distance learning, so yan lang muna yung ginagawa namin. So straight, straight, uh, uh, arithmetic lang yan, and then straight averaging lang yan. Now, now we, when when classes start, titignan natin ngayon kung ano ang epekto nito doon sa dalawang consideration natin dito. No? So one is the effectiveness of the learning. Uh, given like for example, if you are handling 45 students or if they're in a class, there is forty there are 45 learners, uh, ano, na yung, ano yung effectiveness ng learning dito? And at the same time, we would like to see also what is the effect of this in terms of the workload no? or, or the, the uh, working hours of our teacher. So, yun, yun yung reason by, why we include that. And I think this is very important for us in terms of really preparing our classes for October 5. Thank you, Director uh, Ju. Additional, ano then, additional observation. Uh, there are schools and uh, we, we have to recognize it, which attract more students, even if they already have, ano, uh, diba, at the beginning of the school year, Malcolm, 
nadidetermine na yun kung how many students per class, uh, per teacher, per grade, ganun-ganun. Pero nag i yan. Uh, for, again, for ex- uh, ibigay ko yung example, if, I don't know if I should mention, Manila for example. There, there's, there are schools there na naka, ano na yung, um, naka-determine na yun kung how many learners they should have. Pero nakikiawa yung parents, na kailangan i-admit yung anak nila. And ako, I have experience na pinapadalhan pa ako ng, ano, sa Facebook, na yung bata kumakanta o maawit, na pwede bang papasokin siya doon. Manila has become quite uh, attractive, no? So, maski na may, may ano ka, and there are, may mga schools talagang ganon na linalapitan ng mga uh, estudyante, uh, ng mga uh, learners na far beyond the, uh, ano, so, siguro hahanapin niya na, ng uh, solusyon kasi kung sobra-sobrang dami na, hindi bali na kung isang extra student lang, eh kung medyo marami-rami, oh, may mga school lang uh, ganon ang uh, uh, well, for one reason or another I will not I will not say it say I'm just um, um, it's my own uh, analysis kung bakit may mga schools na attract ng um, uh, through no fault of their own high hindi naman yung nangangampanya yung mga teachers na ang dami talagang pumupunta sa isang particular school sa isang particular location sa isang particular na city Tsaka makaproduce naman sila ng do- documentation na taga roon sila o pinanganak sila doon. O, oh, yun. So, uh, maki- masisettle siguro ito, Malcolm, pag ano na, yung more or less nagka- umaandar na yung mga klase natin at makikita yes, na yung distribution. At saka, baka kailangan mag-open ng additional classes. Yung, yung ganun, dahil... Uh, dumadami. Meron namang iba, tamang-tama lang. Meron iba, kulang. Tapos, nagagalit naman yung parents kung ilipat isang bata sa school na kulang ng estudyante. Uh, yung bang hindi pa na-fill up yung kota dahil gusto nila talaga a particular school or a particular place, yung mga ganon. Tapos, uh, yun, nagkakaroon tayo ng challenge dyan. So even if you have the policy there is pressure also to adjust that policy in the light of current uh, developments i can tell you which schools are the are very attractive at at this time and uh, yon right okay. thank you so much Sir, sorry getting uh, a follow up uh, i think that those, that's uh, Oh, sige. Last, sorry, last one. Sorry talaga. Um, uh, for you, Sec, uh, Anne, and pwede rin po kay Sec. Uh, okay. As of July 2020 po, you mentioned in your in your presentation that 10,000 po ang allocated na positions and around 9,700 positions po were created but only 250 positions po ang uh, na-fill up pa lang. Ma'am, siguro ano, my question would be ano po ba yung mga challenges natin? Kakarampot pa lang po yung ating... Uh, dito do yung na, na fill up po na positions and our message and of encouragement na sa teachers to join us. Yeah, ma'am, with your permission and Director June, um, yung pong pag-fill up ng teacher position natin was also affected by the COVID. Uh, alam naman natin na since uh, March ay nagkaroon tayo ng skeletal forces. Pero hindi po kami nagsara din ng hiring. Unti-unti din po ay ginagawa siya. Kaya nga po, importante rin na uh, nakabukas ang aming mga division offices, regional offices, naka-open uh, din at continuing ang transaction. But there is really the challenge on how we do the usual procedure in hiring the teachers. Kasi meron silang demonstration, uh, meron din silang mga pagsabit ng mga papel, etc., but probably you, Sec Jess, who's in charge of filling up a position, can uh, better expound on this. Uh, hindi lang kasi ganun kadali yung ating uh, proseso. Meron din tong ranking na tinatawag. So, over to you, you Sec Jess, para mas uh, diretsyo na. Thank you, you Sec Ann. Uh, una, tatanong ko lang, saan kaya na data na nakita yung 250 lang na fill up? Pero just the same, tama si you Sec Ann, uh, naapektuhan tayo ng pagsara... Slide 10, doon sa ating presentation oh. kanina. Uh, it was from the planning. 
Nagkon yun eh. Uh, kasi may mga interview nga, kagaya sinabi ni Yusekan, na sa katunayan nga yung mga division offices natin, kasi dun po yung level ng kwan eh, hiring po ang superintendent na nag-appoint niyan, tapos po papadala pa yan sa civil service for attestation. Ang ginagawa po nila para lang mapabilis, minsan na meron sila na virtual interview na ginagawa. Ang problema lang pagdating nga doon sa ibang sa malalayong lugar, yung iba po na mga teachers natin wala namang access to uh, to uh, internet. Kailangan po ngayon yung face to face pero hindi nga pwedeng face to face. So yung mga, mga challenges po na apektuhan po tayo. Salamat po. Pero tuloy-tuloy pa rin po yung hiring natin. Yes, uh, you suggest explain ko rin kasi nasa slide 10 siya. Uh, ang ibig sabihin kasi ng position filled up ay naisyuhan siya ng Civil Service Commission ng appointment. At yun yung matagal talaga sa proseso. Pero yung 9,640 ay open na siya at uh, nagkakaroon na dito ng ang tinatawag namin ay deployment. Ibig sabihin, uh, continuing ang hiring, na-select, nagkaroon ng assignment. Yung iba sa kanila nagsisimula na nga kahit wala pa yung appointment ng civil service. Pero para mapunta sila doon sa category na positions filled up, ay iniintay namin yung appointment from the civil service. So minsan yung number na yon importante, nakikita nyo kung konti lang yung na-fill upan, pero uh, meron na talagang na-hire at uh, meron ng selection dyan. Yung definition siguro, ang uh, uh, kailangan talagang i-stress na meron pong procedure doon. Uh, siguro, uh, we should take, I mean, someone has to take the initiative of studying the, ano, uh, a process study natin yan, o a time and motion kung uh, yung journey ng isang papel, ng isang nag apply bilang para teacher or bilang volunteer teacher at saka gaano ka tagal ang pag ano uh, uh, ng proseso at pag-isipan kung paano mapabilis yung uh, proseso na yan kasi kung applicant ka siyempre mag-isip ka rin ng ibang mga options kung saan ka rin mag-a-apply uh, samantalang kung wala pang resulta. At saka sa tingin ko, considering na kailang press ko na tayo, napakaano yung interest nitong para teachers at saka volunteer teachers. Pa, bumuha, lumilitaw uli itong question na ito. Ibig sabihin, interesado siguro ang publiko. So, uh, uh, it might be useful kung reviewin natin uh, yung suggest yung Yung proseso, as I said, yung journey ng papel uh, bago siya makarating at mag-end up as a, as a piece of paper announcing your appointment. Dahil, like, kailangan naman talaga natin. Uh, ang, ang, ang ano dito, ang nag-pressure dito, ang pinanggalingan nito, ang pangangailangan ng teacher. Dahil bago, iba yung ating learning ano, methodology ngayon. Nag-iba yung ating uh, ways of teaching. So, kailangan natin ng additional teachers at uh, therefore, uh, kailangan ding uh, mapabilis yung ating pag-process ng appointments and uh, especially uh, tatlong agencies ang involved dito, DBM, DepEd, and, and Civil Service. So, uh, ayun. Yes. I just to say, under the new pandemic na kailangan ng Tama kayo, kailangan talagang pag-aralan pa natin. Kasi in the past, ma'am, na-shorten na po natin yung uh, proseso. But given this pandemic, madaming mga challenges. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, maraming salamat, Yusek Jess. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Marian. Uh, second to the last, ma'am, na magtatanong si Pauline Versosa ng CNN. Uh, Pauline? Good afternoon po. Good afternoon, so, go ahead. Yep. Um, my question po is for Sec. Briones na lang po. Um, Ma'am, may we ask for a message na lang po to private school teachers naman, private school teachers and students who have been doing distance learning, pero ang daming struggles na lang na-experience, lalo na yung internet nga. Uh, ang, ang message ko sa private school teachers uh, ay ang policy natin ay blended learning. In instances na talagang mahirap, kagaya nung ginagawa sa Cagayan de Oro kanina, nakita ninyo sa Region 10, may mga combination sila na uh, online may connectivity, tapos mayroon ding online may problema. Uh, 
we have to uh, resort to other ways by which we can transmit learning. Um, na tanggap ko nga yung question na yan from one of also of the you know, anchors sa isang radio uh, program na anong gagawin natin. Itong issue na ito ay dinudulog natin sa concerned agencies like NTC, DITC kasi in, ano uh, sila ang uh, tumitingin dyan yung issue ng connectivity. Kaya nga may provision tayo, kaya nga blinended natin eh. Dahil nga uh, noon na uh, pinaliwanag ko na ang, ang tendency mo if you have the kind of data that we have on 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 computers and so on connectivity in the country you would think that uh, ang pinakalogical it should be largely uh, no it should be largely online as it is largely online in many other countries but it turns out there are other factors also at saka yung preferences ng mga parents at saka mga teachers. Ito, the most that we, I mean, I will not say the most kasi sasabihin naman na wala akong puso, no? Ang, ang ginagawa namin is we bring this to the attention. Even the president himself in his speech sa SONA has already uh, instructed uh, concerned uh, agencies, the ITC, the uh, DepEd, and uh, NTC to, to speed up availability of uh, yung, yung connectivity. So, uh, in the meantime, at, ito yung advice sa mga private school teachers. Uh, maybe uh, uh, we can share the experiences of our uh, various regional offices na kung anong ginagawa nila kung walang, kung mahina ang connectivity or it is not reliable. So, kinocombine nila sa other methods of transmission. Uh, I don't know, uh, kasi yung sa halimbawa sa region 10 nakita ko kanina eh, pumapasok sila sa TV, pumapasok sila sa radio. Sa so, mga islands, I know, uh, radio is very, very uh, effective. Uh, yung iba naman, cellphone ang ginagamit. Uh, tinitext yung mga uh, teachers kasi alam naman natin, as I said, na maraming may smartphone na mas maganda pa ng smartphone ng Secretary of Education na maraming nagagawa sa kanilang smartphones. Ngayon, people hold meetings, nagsusum through their smartphones, pero yung transmission of learning, that is something that we have to internalize. So, uh, yun ang advice ko. Um, ano, mag maghanap ng ibang paraan uh, perhaps share the experience of, of our uh, regions and our various schools kung anong ginagawa when these things happen. Explore other uh, ways of uh, learning and uh, delivery like TV and radio. Radio classic talaga yon hindi pa ako pinanganak. Distance learning, pinanganak nga ako 1940. Pero yung radio, World War One pa, kasi ako pa noon, ako ng World War Two So... <laughs> Ginagamit na, ginagamit na yon Yun ang advice ko. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, uh, hindi mawawalan ng creativity ang mga private schools. Uh, kasi uh, that's what teaching is all about. Like a certain mother who taught children how to read using uh, banana leaves. And only recently, may nakita kung saan bang school, saan bang place na yan na ang isang teacher nagtuturo din using leaves na ma leaves din of, of some certain trees, no? To teach children how to write dahil walang papel. So, uh, yung creativity uh, lumalabas dyan. Pero I would like to say na hindi namin absolutely controlled ang connectivity kasi uh, ibang agencies ang tumutulong sa atin dyan. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Salamat po. Bye-bye. Maraming salamat, ma'am. Thank you so much, Pauline. Uh, ang huling magtatanong, ma'am, si uh, Ken Cabaltera ng Bicol Idol FM. Ken, go ahead. Ken? Wala na po ata, ma'am. So I think that's uh, si Pauline. Nagutong na si Ken. <laughs> Ginutong na si Ken. <laughs> So now, uh, we proceed po sa uh, panghuling uh, pananalita po mula kay uh, Undersecretary uh, Annaline Sevilla. Ma'am, yung closing statement po natin. 
closing before the secretary. Um, I, I don't know. We are sending... na, eh. Tapos na ako. <laughs> okay, ma'am. On Tapos behalf na yung mga kota ko. <laughs> Seeded na. Thank you po, uh, ma'am. Uh, on behalf of the Department of Education, we are celebrating the National Heroes Day in this way. This press conference was really committed to the teachers who have helped us implement the Basic Education Learning Continuity Plan. Kanina po, napakinggan ninyo, nakita ninyo si Teacher Rowen Orsolino ng Alabat Island National High School sa Quezon Province. Mismo sa kanya nang galing na ang kagustuhan nila ay magtuloy ang pag-aaral. At kahit gano'n to kahirap, gagawin nila ito. Isa po yun sa mga modern day heroes na ating pong sineselebrate ngayon. At mula po sa ating sekretary, sabi nga niya, mula man lang nakakapansin pero tuloy-tuloy ang gobyerno. Tuloy-tuloy na nagtatrabaho para sa lahat. Yan din po sana makita natin bilang mga nakakatanda na ay ipaalam sa ating mga nakakabata na ang National Heroes Day ay hindi lamang para sa mga National Heroes natin na mga bayani na nakikita natin na bilang monumento. Pero ang mga heroes ngayon ay buhay, nagtatrabaho, nakikipag-usap sa inyo, kasama ng mga guro, ang mga magulang, mga taga-local government units. Nakita niyo kung paano siya ginagawa. Napakahirap, pero hindi ko kami susuko. And I think yun po ang magiging kahulugan ng modernong bayani ngayon. National Heroes Day, kami po ay nakipagdiwang kasama kayo, kasama ang aming sekretary. Para po ito sa inyong lahat, para po sa ating mga kabataan at para sa ating bayang Pilipinas. Magandang umaga! Kain na tayo, ma'am! <laughs> <laughs> Oo, oh, diabetic pa naman ako. Maraming maraming salamat, Yusek Ann. Thank you, ma'am, for that uh, very brave and inspiring uh, closing statement. So, with the leadership of uh, Ma'am Liling, we, sh- we uh, soldier on and we shall over- overcome. Maraming salamat din po sa ating mga RDs kay Teacher Rowan, all the way from uh, uh, Anabat Island, Quezon. Ating mga undersecretaries and spokespersons natin sa DepEd, ang mga kasamahan sa media at sa mga uh, kasama sa publiko na patuloy na sumusubaybay sa weekly updates ng Department of Education. Hanggang sa muli po, on behalf of the public affairs staff na nandito ngayon, nagre-report din, uh, binabati namin kayo ng uh, masayang pagdiriwang ng National Heroes Day. Palaging pinipa- pinapalo ng sekretary. <laughs> Tinipeng ng tantenga. Hanggang sa na virtual press conference po, sama-sama natin ihanda ang ating isip upang maging handa para sa bukas. Maraming salamat at magandang hapot po sa ating lahat. Thank you po. Maraming salamat. Tanong para... Pakita niyo yung tiyan niya.